Hi, I'm Jambo. And greetings. Hotep. Thank you for joining the Pan African Congress Movement's Emoji Sessions. My name is Ndugu Imani Nassau, or Ndugu in Kiswahili just means brother, and a member of the Pan African Congress Movement, and I'll be chairing and hosting uh, this session that we have today at, uh, at Black History Month. And we are very glad and honored to have a young activist, author, historian uh, from the Bookman Academy, uh, Tyrone Smith, brother Tyrone Smith. Greetings, my brother. Greetings, greetings. Hope you're all well. Thank you for having me in this. Wonderful, wonderful. So we're going to, uh, the, as you know, the title of, the, of today's session is called The Black Past. And that's one of the titles of the, of the, of the one of the books that uh, uh, brother Tyrone has, uh, and there it is, has written. Uh, Excellent, so we'll get into that, you know, and also uh, uh, Britain, Slavery and the Myth of Abolition. Yeah, another book that we can, we can talk about. So what the idea of today is to have a discussion around those books, the contents of them, why it was written, you know, and what the Bookman Academy is about and what it's trying to, it's, it's trying to achieve. And so we're so very glad to have, you know, uh, you know a young organisation that's been around from roughly about 2017. Did Tyrone? We um, technically 2018 mm. was um, the time that we founded, launched. But in terms of the entire, I mean, we'll get into the what we do in the online school and stuff. Mm. But the online school that we have for Pan African Studies was launched uh, September 2019. So that's, yeah. that's that's sort of when I count. Hit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, you know, which you know that's a lot in a very short amount of time you know yeah. so you know so you know very impressed and very glad to have, have you, you with us so as with anything what when we start we need to give thanks to the ancestors and to and to the and to the all to the creator um and this is part of our tradition and we have a a practice that we a ritual that we go through we call changing the uh, changing the energy and in Kiswahili, that's Mabadili Koya Nishati, changing the energy. And it's a form of uh, libation or tambika, a, a, a ritual, giving respect to all other rituals that traditional, uh, um, traditional um, practices that we do across, you know, the whole of the diaspora and across Africa. But this is, this is the amalgamation of many of those kinds of pra practices, some form ancient Kemet, some from Vud, uh, for Vudon, um, and it's, it's an order for us to change that energy, be in the right frame of mind, call upon those powers that are within us, not outside of us, that divine energy that's within us, so that we can uh, focus upon what we want to do and the task we wish to achieve and manifest, and manifest that. Uh, but it's also for us to feel comfortable being ourselves, and come back to and coming back to ourselves and you now reclaim our mind and our and our and our spirit and our spirit. So I'm going to begin. Now I know that Elder Pepperkai is on the on the call and uh, Elder, I you don't have to come on screen, but do I have your permission to proceed? Okay, Asante Sana. Right. So I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Right. So, uh, Brother Tyrone, and you're going to join me in the in the ritual. So, thank you very much. Can you see that? Is that on screen? Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it all on the screen. So that's okay. Good. Wonderful. Okay. So, as I said, Mabadiliko Yani Shati. So, uh, greetings, Sister Jackie. Nice to see you. Thank you for, join, uh, for joining us. We're just starting our opening libation ri ri ritual. So uh, we're just going to have Ndugu, a brother Tyran and myself go through it, but please, you know, participate at, ho at, at home. Um, right. So let us continue. So. Kuba Delisha Nguvu Sasa, Tunabo Shakuru Wote. 
mamlaka na mababu. Kuliza kwamba tuna usiana wa karibu na na kwamba watasaide katika konyesha malenga yetu. To change the energy, we now thank you all, the powers and the ancestors, to ask that they have a closer connection with us and they assist us in manifesting our objectives. And in order to change that energy and be in that right place, what we're going to do is we're going to breathe together to get us into that meditative sense so we are more centered and clear and calm and uh, access our higher our higher selves and the and the and the all so in order to, sorry in order to do that we're going to breathe and i'll take us through that so um i'm going to uh, yes the spirit tells me to go through with three so then use it to a count of three and three three is the spiritual quantity for creation coming into birth coming into in, into being so in order to do that what we're going to do is if we could wish to take part please do african spirituality is not about coercion so if you just want to sit and watch and not take part please that's absolutely fine um but if you're at home you can stay on mute but please um participate if you wish to so in order to do so if we can sit straight wherever we are feet flat on the floor palm of your hands on your thighs if you wish and your eyes open or open or closed and in order to breathe we're going to breathe out and in and that's one cycle and i'll count in kiswahili to uh, so we keep time so first of all we're going to breathe out hold it relax breathing through the nose Moja. Breathe it out. Put your stomach in. Empty your lungs. And relax. Breathe in. Through your nose. And breathe in. Final breathe out. Relax. And breathe in through the nose. Tartan. Wonderful. Okay, so I'll continue. Ninaomba la mumba awote. As you can see on screen, I call upon the crater all the all. And what we do is we say together as one, sisi ni kitu kamoja, which is we are the one or we are the same thing. Because the powers that we call upon, the crater, the all, the ancestors, they're not outside of us, they are us. So, if we all say together, Sisi ni kitu kimoja. Sisi ni kitu kimoja. Sisi ni kitu kimoja. Okay, all right. Ninaomba ya nebacha. Ninaomba ya nebacha. Sisi ni kitu kimoja. Sisi ni kitu kimoja. Okay. Sisi ni kitu kimoja. Okay, we have someone else who's joining us. Wonderful. Amari, can I ask that is when people start to join, if you could join, uh, if you could admit them into the call? Mm -hmm. Okay, Santi and Amari. Okay. So uh, I say it, I say the, the power, and then we all say um, Sisi Niki to Kamoja together. Okay, so I speak and then we all speak together. Okay, let's continue. Ninamba Kanuni Nanguvu Ya Papa Legba. There you can see on the screen who Papa Legba is and what the principle represents, that power represents. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. In Amba Kanuni Nanguvu ya Mami Water. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. In Amba Kanuni Nanguvu ya Shu. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Ninamba kanuni na nguvu ya tefnat. Sisi ni kitu kamoja. Ninamba kanuni na nguvu ya nut. Sisi ni kitu kamoja. And now we go on to the Pautnithiru, which is the Kemetic Tree of Life or the company of the aspects of the all. Ninamba kanuni na nguvu ya geb. Sisi ni kitu kumoja. 
Mais là, par contre, il y a un groupe où il y a Al Set. C'est ce qui est le plus important. Mais là, par il y a un groupe où il y a Sebek. C'est ce qui est le plus important. Mais là, par il y a un groupe où il y a Petaru. Sisi Ninaba kanini na nguvu ya saka. Sisi ni kitu kumoja. Ninaba kanini na nguvu ya tafuti. Sisi ni kitu kumoja. Ninaba kanini na nguvu ya alsa. Sisi ni kitu kumoja. And finally, sisi ni Ninamba can in Anguzu ya Amen. Sitting Kitu Kamoja. And now we've given thanks to the all and onto the powers again, which are within us, are us. We can now call upon those ancestors who are in our direct bloodline. We give thanks to those first, because if they weren't, they hadn't existed, we wouldn't be here. We give thanks, we give thanks. So we start with those in our direct bloodline. I'll start. So, Nina Omba, Mama Yangu, Ujimane Kelly, now Bibi Yangu, Ketura Reed, now um, Babu Yangu, Edgerton Reed, called my mother, my gran grandmother, and my grandfather. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. By the Tyrone, is anybody in your direct bloodline you'd like to call? Uh, yes. Niniambo, um, Mabu, uh, my mother, Nkechi, um, my father, Fletcher, my grandparents, and all the ancestors through blood from before. <laughs> And uh, Adigo Mari, as you're on, would you like uh, to, would you like to call upon? Uh, Miriam McDowell, John, John McDowell, Auntie Beverly, and Auntie Ruby. Sister Nee, Sister Nee, Kitu Kamoja. And everybody at home, or, you know, I won't ask you to come on online, but please call upon who you wish to call upon in your own direct bloodline. I'll give a moment. And I would say, Sisini Kitu Komoja. Sisini Kitu Komoja. Wonderful. Okay, now giving thanks to those in our direct bloodline, we can give thanks to those who inspire us, those who've left a tremendous and wonderful legacy for us to follow. So I'll begin. Ninamba, Waze, the Honourable Marcus Mazar Garvey, Amy Ashwood Garvey, Amy Jacques Garvey, Marcus Garvey Jr., Dr. Francis Press Wellsin, Baba Brinjama. Nana Bonsu, Ndugu Barenge, Ndugu Tegel, Amawale El Haj Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X, Betty Shabazz, King Henri, Queen Mary Louise, Emperor Jacques Dessalines, Empress Felicite, Toussaint Lilo Overture, Na. Suzanne Simon the Overture. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Yes, Ndugu. Ndugu Tyron, anybody you wish to call upon? Great ancestor. Um, you, you covered almost 90%, but I'll drop in a couple other names. Nini Aomba, uh, Baba, oh, 
Mama Marimba Annie, and Nana Amos Wilson, uh, Chinwezu, uh, Osajva Kwame Nkrumah, Thomas Sankara, Patrice Lumumba, Asata Shakur, Sisini Kitukomoja. Did you marry? Nina Omba, um, you know, Nina Omba, uh, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, the three founders of the Black Panthers, um, Norma, have Harriet Tubman, um, Dwayne McDuffie, um, Chadwick Boseman. Whoa. Um, <laughs> so listening to the, um, yeah, well, the, the, the ancestors are speaking. Yeah. Anyone else? Hold, hold, hold on. Who's who's up? Here we go. J uh, Jacques Victor Henry, son of King Henry. Okay. That is. That's it. Yeah. This is, okay. Yeah. That's. All right. Sisi Niki to Kamoja. To Kamoja. Sisi Niki to Kamoja. And everybody at home, when they were all on the call, I'll give a moment. Anybody that you wish to call, please do. And we say together, Sisini Kitu Komoja. Sisini Kitu Komoja. And now we can call upon those ancestors of the, who we don't always know their names, or there's too many to mention. So I'll, I'll, call, I'll, call, on, I'll call on them on our behalf. Nina Omba, Mababuya, Mangamazi, those who fought and died in the Mangamazi. Sisini Kitu Komoja. Minamba, Mababuya, Gulavita, Takivita, Asian Revolution, na Kingdom of Eighty. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Minamba, Mababuya, Watia, First Nations of Australia, Papuans, Melanesians, Tasmanians, Black Polynesians, na Indus Kush. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Minamba, Mababuya, Wanachamaya, PACM, ASHO, Universal Need to Grow Improvement Association and African Communities League, SWAPO, SWAPO, APLA, and Freedom and Land Party, and Black Panther Party for Self Defense. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Minamba Mababuya, Mataifia, Taseti, Nubia, Kemet, Kush, Taifia, Mosai, Taifia, Benin, Taifia, Zulu, Taifia, Zimbabwe, Maroons, Kwa Caribbean, North America, now South America, now Shangamaya Dynasty. Sisini Kitu Kamoja. Minamba, Mababuya, Watiya, San, Twa, Nahutu, the first peoples. Sisini Kitu Komoja. Sisini Kitu Komoja. Nina Waomba Wanaishi and Bao Watakate Sisi. Nawali Mababu and Bao Bada Hawajazaliwa. I call upon those living that defend us and those ancestors yet to be born. Sisini Kitu Komoja. Beautiful. Beautiful. And now we're going to end on the words of manifestation and power on screen. We always have to be careful about what we say because we bring into reality these things depending on our culture, not like our culture, on our character and our intention. So we always have to be very careful about what we say, particularly what we say about ourselves. So I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak it in Kisweli and then you just follow after me, what I, what I say, but I'll take it slow. Mapenzi Wote, ni Mapenzi Yangu. Mapenzi Wote, 
Good. 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 Hakuna Wanzo Namba Ufahamo Wangu Yawote Namba Ufahamo Wangu Yawote Uundale Kukua Uundale Kukua Nguvu Zote Kwa Watu Wetu Nguvu Zote Kwa Watu Wetu and in Kometian, Anuk, Amen. Anuk, Amen. Amen. The will of the all is my will. There is no beginning and there is no end. May my understanding of the all continue to grow. All power to our people. I am. Amen. Asante Nisana, Jamar. Thanks very much, family. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yes, those who can come screen, you're, you're on screen. That's what that's wonderful. And thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for joining us. As you're saying, um, I'm my name is Ndugu Imani Nassau, member of Pan African Congress Movement, and this is the PACM Emoji Sessions or Unity Sessions. We use Kiswahili in in um, the Pan African Congress Movement because we feel that if there was going to be a United Grand Republic of Africa or United States of Africa, that the lingua franca, the language that we could use to unite all our people with the kids really because so many of our people already speak that, 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 that language. So, right, so we're going to talk about the black past and we have our dear brother here, our brother um, Tyrone Smith from the Bookman Academy to talk, to talk about that and we're gonna talk about the, the, this yeah. wonderful, one of the wonderful books, The Black Past and the also uh, slavery and uh, Britain, slavery and the uh, and the myth of abolition. If I've got that right, and do, yeah, uh, yeah, you got yeah. that right. I've got yeah, your hand as well. Oh, so. Okay, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> I've I've got it as an ebook, so I can't bring it on yeah. screen. So that, okay. that's, no that's what that's what so you know. So you can bring it up on screen uh, on screen. But before we get into you know into the main part of the conversation, because we're going to have a a a com uh, conversation. Mm. Um, what we wanted to do is give you a moment to tell uh, all of the, the brothers and sisters who are joining us about the Bookman Academy and yourself. You know, you know what's it and what and you know what is its aims and you know objectives and and the, the reason for it. Set, you know for for its crea creation, and then we can get onto the uh, onto the book. Yeah, but, the, the yeah. content for sure. Please. Um, so those that don't know, uh, Bookman Academy. We are a Pan-African organization that primarily focuses on education via our online school. Um, those at home anyway, they can just go onto Google and just literally type in bookmanacademy.com. I'm 99.999% sure. I don't need to explain where the name comes from. Um, but just in case, it comes from Dutty Bookman, who was the very first leader of the Haitian Revolution back in 1791. Um, so with that kind of energy and what Bookman stood for is basically what we stand for, you know, empowering through action, uh, this Pan-African solidarity in order to create uh, revolutionary consciousness and act upon that. Um, so within our online school, there's uh, five major sections, which are uh, Black history, of course, being sort of the most, I suppose the largest section of the uh, online school is on Black history. Mm -hmm. Then there's a politics section, which is split into two uh, sections, which is world politics. So the economic systems, the political policies that have worked to keep the African continent down, finding out about terms like colonialism, colonialism, neocolonialism, what they really mean, what they look like in practice. Then there's um, revolutionary politics or liberation politics, which is like the liberation philosophy of revolutionary groups, individuals, particular schools of thought and how we can utilize them for today in order to better our situation as a people. Then we have a psychology section, which is something that can be kind of undermined a bit, analyzing both on an individual and a group level, how racism affects uh, a consciousness of a people. And then we have a sociology section, which kind of has the sort of, I guess everything else doesn't quite fit into those categories. So looking at the effects of racism on society, how society is structured to be institutionally racist, how our Pan-African societies have to respond to that and basically a sort of social history of the way things have 
developed in uh, recent times. And then, of course, we're going to get into the books, but it's not just the online school, which, by the way, is free. Um, and they're individual lessons, which if you're new to a topic, you can start at uh, level one. So we have three levels. The final level is the most advanced. We haven't actually completed that yet. But level one, all the different subjects, um, is if you're somewhat of a beginner on that particular subject. It can be something that's quite niche or it can be something quite broad. And you can work your way through that quite short, digestible lessons, take you probably five to ten minutes to go through a lesson at level one uh, level uh, then we have level two which is a bit more sort of in depth a bit more detailed a bit more specialized in certain uh, subjects for example you might want to learn how the police came to be formed and how there's this sort of anti-black structure within police which doesn't seem to matter depending on the borders you're in how did that come to be how did black people find themselves in impoverished ghettos as opposed to you know all these different sort of subjects that are a bit more niche a bit more detailed that's in level two. Then level three eventually will become the most advanced level where it goes into some serious detail. Um, but we also have, of course, the two books. So you can purchase some products. We also have uh, some artwork that I've done of Marcus Garvey, if you want to honor uh, Marcus and Isaiah Garvey on your wall. In fact, you can actually see it behind me. Yeah. That's, the, that's, the, that's the drawing. Um, and then we have like a, a resource list. So reading lists that we've used. We have a uh, sort of community section where people can submit their own essays and writing that they want to speak on if they just want to sort of um, get out their creative juices mm -hmm. on a relevant subject. Um, and then of course we do online stuff, but we do events in person, we do teaching events, we do events such as this. Um, we try and make it as free as possible because um, our education, I mean, no one's going to sort of fund our own education and we all mm -hmm. need to get as educated as possible in a short of space amount of time. Uh, and a lot of us, don't have the financial means to be dishing up ridiculous prices for uh, mm -hmm. education. So we've maintained that the website itself is free. Of course, the books you have to pay for, but that's mostly because of the shipping and uh, uh, printing costs. Um, and yeah, most of the events that we try to do, at least the online events are usually free. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have in-person events as well. Um, and yeah, so we've the, the website's been up since September 2019. So about three, like just over three years, the website's mm -hmm. been available. Um, got started around August 2018 is when we launched the social media. And yeah, we're just going to keep sort of building towards uh, instilling a Pan-African consciousness within as many people of, of, as possible internationally as well, which is why the school is online. Um, mm -hmm. So anyone who has a reasonable internet connection, whether they're in Ghana or Jamaica or the United States or France can just log on and mm -hmm. within five seconds be studying black history and politics and sociology. Um, so yeah, we're very sort of, in terms of politically in the mold of Pan-African nationalism, so Garveyism, mm -hmm. uh, but trying to sort of update that for the modern day with modern technology, etc. And yeah, so far it's been, um, within the last three years, has been some good responses, lots of people mm -hmm. engaging with it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going well. Of course, it's, it's a very long term project. It's mm -hmm. not something that's going to happen in five years. It's more like 50 to 100 years kind of thing yeah, but absolutely. yeah we're going to sort of keep uh striving to teach and educate and organize and do things in the community and we'll get into some of that stuff i suppose uh, after we've spoken about the books as well yeah beautiful beautiful yeah so um what we'll do is as we're talking as we're talking i'll put the um the web link in the chat so people can you know can, can click uh, onto perfect. that yeah, and I think that was on the flyer as well. So you should you should be able to go on to uh, go on to uh, inform uh, into the Bookman Academy there, and yeah. you know get the products and see the and see and see the, and see the courses. So that is that is fantastic. So yes, so you know it's very impressive, very impre impressive, my brother. Thanks. You know what, what you're doing, and it's not just you, is it? There's there's also uh, there's another founder, but there's a, are there other people as well who are helping you well, with this? Yeah, well, um, there, I did co-found the uh, organization and uh, online school with someone who is no longer part of uh, our organization. Right. Uh, obviously, I don't want to get into the details behind that, but um, no, no, it happens. Yeah. That, that person is no longer with us. But yeah, we do work with, and we have people involved directly in um, mostly uh, online uh, sort of free video events type of stuff and then mm -hmm. some community stuff. And we, we, of course, we work with different uh, organizations as well. 
mm-hmm. with whatever they may need specifically. Um, but yeah, um, as of now, I'm the sole founder uh, remaining. Um, but yeah, we do have other people directly involved as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, uh, it's uh, beautiful to see my brother and, you know, the consistency and the dedication, you know, because yeah. it's, you know, yeah. it's, you know, when you put your head above the parapet, it's not always easy to stay there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so. it can be, it can be, uh, it can a, be a challenge to stay consistent, but we almost have no choice. Oh, we have no the, choice. We the, have the no nonsense choice. is consistent, so we need oh, to yeah, be exactly. Better. Exactly. You was called to do it, my brother. You was called to do it, you know. And so you know, you couldn't be doing anything else. So you know, yeah. so that's, yeah. now that's how we all understand. Understand, you know, it's a it's a select few who will pick themselves up and actually. You know, be part of organisations, form organisations, yeah. try and do and try and do do something. And yeah, sometimes yeah. Uh, we don't give our flowers when we're live. We wait until the the, the brother or sister has passed, and then we say, and "What then, a fantastic person!" And you know yeah. and what they're doing, you know. But when they're alive, they need you to support. Yeah, they no need that. Thing, support you know. So, yeah. so here's your flowers right now, my brother. It's thank brilliant you, what you're brother. doing. It's one. It's wonderful to see. It's wonderful to see. You thank know. You, so. So as an elder brother, you know, has been involved yeah. in it since I was about 19, you know, it's wonderful to see what you're doing, you know, thank and you, it's, thank you so much. very high quality, very impressed. Uh, so. I appreciate it. Yeah, I feel, I feel as well, when once uh, those of us that begin to sort of study and understand things, we almost have like a responsibility and a Absolutely. duty to, to do what yeah. we can to spread the word, at, at the very least spread the word, if not organised directly. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the books, and the organize and the and the, the thoughts behind it, you know, each one of the, of the books. But we're going to kind of, as you wanted, kind of freewheeling, yeah. Mm. So we'll talk, you know, about the book and just give that kind of uh, um, uh, kind of background to that, so people can uh, understand it. And then we'll just open it up to everybody who's here, and they can ask questions or yeah, make comments, comments and so that. Yeah. And we can just we can just vibe and just talk, and 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 you know and and. Uh, and reason with each other yeah so you know and uh, and then like i say we'll post this on to our youtube channel pan african congress movement tv and so oh. people can watch it at their you know at their at, at their leisure yeah mm. so let's let's start with this yeah okay black path, uh, black, uh, black path which as i'm looking at it is you know is over three yeah just under three uh, 300 pages it's like 277 pages and you know what it reminded me of this this and you know and also the uh, the um britain slavery and yeah. the myth of abolition it very much reminded me of um uh the browder files you know you know and you know i know that in the in the early 90s when that came out when i was mm. you know that just hit the hit the ground and was like a wildfire because what it was is that it condensed information into digestible parts so it really just condensed it down and was easy for people to pick up and under and understand mm. it wasn't you know you know all the books of like dr ben and and others are fantastic and you you, yeah. want, you want to get into it but you know you might have to sit there with a dictionary as you're going through to understand it or you know yeah. or physics books or you know chemistry exactly. yeah. you know, in order to understand what's going on but that really hit the ground running and was able to condense it there condense it down you know and was was you know not too long but a lot of information that people could easily digest in a language that wasn't talking down to people wasn't wasn't um uh you know being patronizing by saying we're we're we're, we're talking at a very low level it was just that normal conversational terms not you know not too many you know uh, academic terms but mm. at a level that everyone could under, everyone could understand was good information um and you know that's what it reminded me reminded me of and the amount of you know the stuff that you've got in here you know that we get just to say the chapters that we've got chapter one gods and pharaohs so we've got the Nile valley which i believe is your particular on the your particular Areas that you have studied quite deeply. Um, is that yeah, it's probably, it's, it's probably one of it's, it's one of definitely one of my favourite areas of history. Yeah, exam, me and you both. Um, yeah. Then there's uh, you know so there's that you know Kemet Kush, um, you know but were they black? And then the two, chapter two is the cities, militants, 
and Moors of North Africa and Black Europe. Chapter three is Marvels and Empires of West Africa. Chapter four, Towers and Traders of East Africa. Chapter five is Knights and Armour, Central Africa. Chapter six, Great Houses and, and Conical Castles castles of Southern Africa. Chapter seven is Black Resistance Uprisings against uh, Transatlantic Slavery. Uh, chapter eight, Black Avengers. This is the Haitian Revolution. Um, chapter nine, White Africa's White Age, uh, Colonialism. Um, chapter 10, Black Avengers 2, Heroes of Recent History. Uh, and then their postscript. So yeah. that's a hell of a lot of information to get to yes. condense down it is the black past it is the black, it is yeah. the black past and you know like i said you know that in, in you know put into that form into that format that is very digestible so a lot of history and a lot of reading has gone into mm. into producing this so yeah just you know just kind of you know just talk, talk a little bit more about that because it is yeah. a, a very good start very okay. good. I'll give an overview and then we can maybe delve into more specific the chapters and stuff. But, mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I've been studying, not in any sort of formal setting, but through reading the Pan-African authors of the past mm -hmm. um, for quite a few years. Um, mainly, I mean, it's, I guess you kind of have to go back to the, the before I even started Book Academy, but mm. it's like, a, it's kind of like um, a snowball effect almost or like going down the rabbit hole once you start mm -hmm. you just kind of just mm -hmm. keep going and then I got to a stage where I was thinking how can I kind of disseminate this information because most people particularly um younger like my age and younger mm -hmm. are not particularly eager at when it comes to uh reading books yeah. particularly books that are like sort of pretty heavy which for mm -hmm. me honest 90 percent of pan-african literature is really heavy stuff yeah um difficult can be difficult to read can be, um, yeah, like you say, I mean, lots of it can be like written from the 50s, 60s, some of it's translated, that's, mm -hmm. check out the Diop's work, yeah. that's fantasy work's all translated and it's all written in sort of a bit archaic English. It's not, it's not the most um, enjoyable to read yeah. necessarily, um, even though how invaluable it is and indispensable. Um, so I had this, you know, I was thinking, how can I get this across to people? And I also mm -hmm. thought about myself and how I would love to sort of teach and, continue to study alongside teaching these subjects mm. and then that's how eventually it came to the idea of developing Bookman Academy and then in terms of the book I was thinking that the the website itself in terms of the lessons because the lessons are so short mm -hmm. um, even the level two lessons are quite short it's, it's almost not enough to uh for people to just completely get an entire overview of mm -hmm. whether it's history or politics or whatever else because it's quite specific on the lessons um so then, yeah, thought of an idea of developing a book that, not number one, encompasses a lot of the entire history mm -hmm. to the sort of the most, I suppose, the most important and the most interesting events and people mm -hmm. and areas of the uh, black world. Because I was thinking, I was, I was trying to sort of find books that had at least an entire overview. And most of them, they either covered diaspora history and it's kind of an over, mm -hmm. overview of diaspora history particularly during the uh, Martha, mm -hmm. or they uh, have a great overview of just pre-colonial Africa. That wasn't mm. really one that melded both, mm. uh, particularly not with the recent sort of revolutionaries and heroes as well. Mm. Um, so then that sort of generated itself, that kind of idea and have that, and I had all that obviously the study and the research and reading that I've been doing for years before that. So I had so many books I could sort of call upon where I knew oh, if I want to learn about this particular area, um, I've already read it in this book. Let me just pull it out again, look at my notes. Um, and then I thought, how can I get it to be more interesting and eye-catching? And then I thought, mm -hmm. okay, let's get some illustrations involved. Mm -hmm. Let's get, um, let's make it look kind of sexier and not just sort of plain text on like white paper. Um, get a I, was nice gonna sort of ask, I was going to ask, yeah, because, you know, you see the cover and you think, okay, right. And then you look inside and, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. it's, on, it's, it's, on, it's on colored paper. So, you yeah, know, so, yeah, yeah so I was... Yeah, so trying to make it eye catching, especially for like uh -huh. younger people, maybe like uh -huh. um, in their twenties, late teens, uh, to mid teens, um, and then keeping it sort of almost like interactive and engaging, and having like maps, having timelines that keeps uh -huh. things in people's heads. If they they read it once and they can't quite remember something, they can just go back to like the timeline or look uh -huh. at the tables at the back and stuff. Um, and yeah, just trying to sort of produce it in a sort of in a way that I would think if I was a bit younger, 
before I sort of got fully into studying this, what would be like a perfect sort of all encompassing overview uh-huh. that I could just read and be like, okay, now I'm set. Okay, what are my favorite areas? I can now dig deeper in the Haitian Revolution or dig deeper in Kemet or dig deeper in uh-huh. uh, Dahomey or whatever it may be. Um, so that's kind of the genesis of the book and how it came to be. And um, uh-huh. yeah, incorporating the illustrations and stuff that I did. Um, oh, you did the yeah. illustrations? You did the illustrations? Oh yeah, I did the illustrations as well myself, yeah. <laughs> even more impressed. Yeah, even more impressed, my brother. Yeah. Even I mean, more I, impressed. I, I, these yeah. these yeah. are really good. I mean, I wish I could, you know, people had the book in front of them to look at to look at it. But yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Some, these are damn good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you. yeah try to get very like, impressive. Nice quality paper and stuff as well. Yeah. Mean, it's a bit more expensive to print, but it's not we sort of need to get away from this idea of yeah, look, yeah, education yeah. equals making money type of thing. For for those who are thinking, you know, on the website, you know, I go to the website, you know, this is twenty pounds. Mm. Yeah, this yeah. is twenty pounds. This is twenty pounds. That's shit. I know. You know, cost of living crisis and everything else. You know, money's <laughs> tight. Yeah, but for what's in here, that's a steal. This <laughs> is a steal at only twenty pounds. So you pitched yeah. it at the bright. You know, any less will be you just giving it away. You know, which if we had, if we had, you know, the the, the ability. Oh to yeah, if I had so financial back in it, you, just, you know, everybody, yeah. you know, you just be with a box on the streets and here, here, yeah, so- here, take this. Yeah. you know but um yeah that's a that's absolute still absolute still for yeah. what's in, what's in there and it, it's uh you know from my reading through it and skimming and skimming through it, i read through all of the the other books uh, but mm. this one from the, this you know because you have to take your time mm. with this however yeah. excellent book for somebody who is just you know if somebody was just starting to want to know a little bit more about black history mm. perfect yeah. book exactly. to give them perfect book to get to, to to give them and it takes that you know like as you said if you a, as you very well explained it it's a very it's a very good as, a, as an introduction as an introduction very digestible yeah, and exactly. even if you have been studying you know african history politics for many years as i have i found things in there that i didn't know or i found bits of information that were very useful to the say oh i've read this and i could go to it straight away and pick out that mm-hmm. piece of information so yeah. yes very well researched, very well presented, my brother. Thank you, thank you. Excellent, yeah. excellent. This, this will be a classic. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd well, love it to be. Yeah, I this will, will be a classic as time goes as time goes on. It's a very, yeah. it's a very good, it's a very good book. Oh, thank um, you. So you know, the politics behind it. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. because anybody can you know write about the black past. You know, even you yeah. know anybody from any of the race can re- read about the black past. So you're, you know, as you said you know, nationalist Garveyites. So, so yes, please talk about that, about, you know... Yeah. You know the, I tried to, I tried to make it clear, clear in the, um, the sort of introduction part and the postscript part, um, or preface and postscript, that, um, I mean, number one, when it comes to studying black history, not only is there this... Um, well, I'm talking sort of in mainstream, so mm-hmm. I'm guessing within the, the circle that we're in today, it doesn't really apply, but most mm-hmm. of the people that... Uh, <laughs> purchase this book won't be in pan-african organizations Uh but there's a tendency when it comes to looking at black history and studying black history that um i mean if you're in like a mainstream institution number one they're almost always going to go straight to slavery Uh um but even within our own sort of circles and outside mainstream when we're talking with each other we celebrate the achievements that individuals have made within white society in the last hundred years and to us that's mm-hmm. somehow that's black history mm-hmm. um without understanding that black history is 95 percent of the time before we even encountered europeans yeah um so i had to try and make that clear mm-hmm. and then what also was very important which i touch on at the beginning and then extend in the postscript is that what is the point in learning history mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. people either there's like there's like there's two sides because we get a lot of the even supposedly activist Pan-African community mm-hmm. and people within mm-hmm. often study history to make themselves just feel good, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh yes, we were, we, we did build the pyramids mm-hmm. and we did the Sphinx and we had mm-hmm. however many kingdoms in West Africa that could compete with anywhere in the world. And Mali was the richest empire. And mm-hmm. Southern Africa, they were tracking the stars and you feel really good, of course, but what is the use in that in today? Mm-hmm. And I had to sort of make clear that we have to utilize 
the the different uh, methods of looking at the universe, mm -hmm. as well as the methods of resistance, as well as mm -hmm. the uh, methods of organization, politically, economically, we have to utilize mm -hmm. all of that information in order to build a successful revolutionary movement of today. And that is the goal of studying history. Like, there's so many historians that have pointed this out, Pan African historians, whether it's mm -hmm. Diop, whether even like Malcolm X, yeah. uh, the use of learning history, Amos Wilson. And so I had to try and make that clear within both the prescript, the preface, sorry, and the, and, the, and the postscript. And then within the postscript, you're going specifically, okay, you've read these 10 chapters. What have you mm -hmm. learned? How can it be applied? Okay, you know about, for example, um, Peshesha and Merik Tav Kemet, who were uh, chief female doctors thousands of years before there was any sort of female doctor equivalent in places mm -hmm. like Europe or the Middle East. Um, so what does that mean? That means that the system of institutionalized patriarchy that we live under mm -hmm. is not a formality. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be. You know, uh, when we look at the, the great scientists and sacred science that we've developed, we know that the specific way of viewing the world in a sort of Eurocentric, logical, judo-christian lens again doesn't have to be and mm -hmm. sort of driving home the point that with all this that i'm saying also driving home the point that studying history is so important and so fundamental because once you realize understand these things you think ah, oh, the world can be different it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be capitalism nine to five to try and slay myself to mm -hmm. owning a house it doesn't have to be this world and once people sort of understand that it can be kind of dangerous for the um the powers that be because then you think, oh, okay, we can actually change things. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to sort of basically make that clear. And I mostly did that within the, the preface and the, and the postscript. Because um, I think uh, a lot of people, especially seems to be kind of my age, um, and older, but I'd say my age seems to be more and more this kind of individualist mentality of, yeah. I mean, they kind of feel like, oh, yes, it's, all that history stuff's well and good, but it's not going to earn me money. So let me just get a business degree and try and become a an, millionaire. And then maybe mm -hmm. I can then dash a little bit of money at my community while mm -hmm. I move away to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding that that mentality is not a mentality of liberation. That's a subservient mentality. And understanding that a subservient mentality will never give you power, even if you think you, okay, you now become a millionaire, but they can take it away from you tomorrow and you've got no answer. Whereas if you see yourself as being an integral part of a community to build some power, then they can't take the things from you that they could if you didn't do that. And all of this basically is the framing of this book um, and why it's so important of studying history and knowing this history and framing in a sort of particular context. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So for yourself, your, mm. you know, you scanned over a little bit. So, your history, yeah, your 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 history, you know, you know, where did you start to learn these 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 things? Was it in organization? It was it. What it, sound, what it sounds like is, you know, that it's your own personal journey, mm. your own personal thing. But yeah, just you know, yeah, because like you say, there's not many young people your age who are doing this. Many people doing things. But you know, producing something of that well, this will well research. So yes, let's give us a little bit about you know, you know, what are the former the the uh, uh, the things that really formed you and, and helped you and helped you think that I need yeah. to do I need to do something about this, you know, and particularly like your um, connection with Malcolm X, Omar Ali, yeah. Haj Malik, Omar, um, uh, um, uh, Malcolm, Malcolm X. So please, my brother. Yeah. Um. I would say, to be honest, probably without even realizing it, my foundation probably came initially from uh, black music um, mm -hmm. and listening to a lot of old soul music that has, that we don't even seem to seem to realize now, how, sort of the consciousness that's behind, like Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. what's going on, even like some Jimi Hendrix stuff. Yeah. I know it's mm -hmm. not soul music, but um, and having that kind of backing and basis. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, getting into when I was, how old must I have been? Maybe like 11, 10, starting to get into like uh, 90s hip hop mm -hmm. and seeing seeing the sort of change, even though obviously I was, it was the 2000s when I was uh, 10, but seeing the change retro, retrospectively of how hip hop shifted from having kind of a balance of mm -hmm. a lot of consciousness, a lot of badness, but even the badness had consciousness, like NWA, 
Yeah. Saying F the police. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, it's, it's badness, but it's conscious. Yeah, no, yeah, it's um, conscious. It's, there's a consciousness that, to it. That's what I'm saying. So even yeah. like the, 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 the gangster rappers were conscious, like Ice Cube. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, Tupac Shakur being the yeah, he was he's like the most apex gangster rapper yeah. as well as the most apex conscious rapper at the same time. Yeah, just seeing it all shift until it slowly just became yeah white supremacist propaganda basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then slowly getting older and kind of like I remember like speaking to friends like why is this because like because I genuinely didn't enjoy the music that was supposed mm-hmm. to be of my time, mm-hmm. and I was just thinking like why is this why is this happening kind of questioning that. And I guess that leads to the bigger political questions, uh, which leads you into the sort of politics, the political policies and stuff. And then um, from there, you then obviously you, you, you know names, you know Malcolm X, you know Martin Luther King, mm-hmm. you know some, and then you start to explore, you know, the Black Panther Party. Yeah, I heard of them, but what were they really doing? Mm-hmm. And then you start watching some videos about it, maybe some interviews with people. And then there's um, a few of the sort of more modern um, like guys like Akala, for example, I remember yeah. watching interviews with him uh, on YouTube, mm-hmm. and um, I remember listening quite a few years ago now to his "Fire in the Booth" part one, mm-hmm. and then literally being like, "This is this is the stuff I say," but he's just saying <laughs> it in a more articulate way. Yeah, and then from there you sort of get inspired to study more on particular revolutionaries, and then you start mm-hmm. reading a lot more, and then it's just, and then I saw sort of the importance of African history within mm-hmm. that and then I kind of gravitated towards heavily studying that as well but I try and kind of be like a overall kind of overarching all the different subjects within black studies as mm-hmm. opposed to being specifically focused on one thing mm-hmm. but um and then from there yeah I started thinking how can people get this information because no one's sort of understanding it people can see the problems but they don't know how to get to the mm-hmm. solutions and it's mm-hmm. like there's so many works our solutions are literally within the, all of these pages. There's so many great scholars. We've had so yeah. many great revolutionaries. And if even just 10% of us rigorously studied this stuff, we'd change our situation overnight. Mm-hmm. And it basically went from there. And that's eventually led to the development of the online school and everything else. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like, um, cause I feel like with a lot of people, there's either like a penny dropped moment. Mm-hmm. But for me, it seems like a lot more sort of gradual and a lot more from when I was like very young due mm-hmm. to, listening to black music and being raised along, alongside black music. But then there's um, certain moments as well. Like I remember in 2016, there was the, um, the deaths of, I think it was Philando Castile. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, it might have been, and that might have been the same year as um, Edson de Costa, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then there were a whole bunch of uprisings in the summer of that year. And I remember yeah. going to those, going by myself sometimes, and then I joined the uh, the Black Lives Matter UK organization. Mm-hmm. I formally joined yeah. it, but then I saw how much of a shambles it was, yeah. and that led me to try and start my own organization. That didn't really kind of work out because people were at each other's throats, and there was like mm-hmm. vendettas and stuff. Um, so that kind of collapsed. Um, I mean, it's all a sort of learning process. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the, the year after that, I went to the Caribbean for two weeks mm-hmm. and basically immersed myself alongside some of the locals as well as just basically using that to just study in the sun for two mm-hmm. weeks straight. And I think those kind of two, those two years kind of, were, I wouldn't say turning points, but they were definitely drivers towards getting where I am today, for sure. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, you know before we go on to the next book, you know, mm. you know what you're saying about the music, you know, there's mm. very um, key similarities to reggae. So we have exactly. you know, the yeah, conscious, a lot, lot of reggae as well. I listen to you know, yeah. yeah, you know, Bob Marley, and, Peter Shost. Yeah, I can't remember yeah. exactly. Exactly, to exactly. The, like, Rastafari was you know, mm-hmm. and it took it. You know, not only was it teaching the African community, the diaspora, right across the board, it was teaching other races as well. You know, it yeah. was you know, it was you know, you know, because that Rastafari had that you know humanitarianism about it as well. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. then we saw, Justice. you know, you know, we saw you know, nineties, you know late 80s 90s shabba ranks you know and then he said mm. the, you know the slackness and then you know and so now you know the you know the, the conscious vibes you mm. know is almost it's a, a niche within reggae very yeah, small. Been, 
when reggae yeah. itself is supposed to be yeah exactly the most just pure consciousness yeah, exactly. Cause, yeah, cause yeah like... exactly exactly and you know that there was an attack there was a definite way yeah. to, you know how can we use yeah. this thing because we see, we see with hip-hop that mm-hmm. you know you know that you know nearly every culture every nation on the face of the earth is is influenced by black culture mm-hmm. but you know this bastardized idea that we have of black cult of black culture this you know the stereotype of it but everybody wants it they want to be it mm. they want to be you but i want to i want just, to vibe like you i want to yeah, i want the energy yeah, exactly. you, just, just you know? yeah oh yeah I can, they can see I can, I don't want to live like you I don't want to where the pain comes exactly. from the why you're so you why you like this but you know i want to i want to have that and yeah. so you know so you know so you know so you know you know capitalism says how can we turn this because one it's too powerful and two, you can't, you know, the genie's out of the box, you know, exactly. you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't put the genie back in the bottle now. Mm. So how can we circumvent this and use it for our, you know, you know, and, you know, you talk about it in your book, you know, uh, who is it? Um, is it Carter G. Woodson about talking about, you know, that, you know, yeah. that, you know, that, you know, that if you haven't made the door in the back door, you'll make one exactly. yourself, you know, so yeah. that whole thing, how can you, how can you capture this? How can you, you, you capture this? So, you know, culturism particularly. So yes, we see that in, in, uh, in reggae, you know, mm-hmm. we see that moving away, you know, that, you know, taking the, the box that is reggae and putting something else in it. And the same yeah. with rap, you know, that, you know, it had, as you said, you excellently uh, said, you know, everything was in it, but there was, you know, PE, X clan, you know, you know, yeah. you know, you know, gang star, you know, you know, all these, you know, you know, all this, you know, rescue exactly. development, you know, so many things that were teaching. And even the gangsters, Ice T, Ice Cube would be having something, you know, you know, exactly, you know, you know Ice T, you know, Hunty Child, you need to listen to that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, just breaks it down for you, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we, that whole thing, because I grew up in that, that was my 20s, you know, so that was, you know, the whole thing was, you know, um, uh, you know, dropping knowledge, you know, mm. you know, you know, and, you know, wearing the Africa pendants, and why was it that whole, that whole thing was, you know, with, you know, you know, it, you know all, all of the, all of the, all that whole, you know, the, all the, people all forget, those, like, yeah, the, the, the five, the, there's five pillars of hip hop. Most people think there's only four, yeah. um, but there's the fifth pillar is knowledge. That's yes. supposed to push to the people, but exactly, it's, exactly. it's been erased for the it's last been erased. time. It's been erased, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit erased, and only a, yeah. only a few were still, you know, there. But you know, that's that, that's something we can go on to another, there's another com- conversation. Yeah. Today, we can even have that conversation, but it's all part of it. Um, yeah, exactly. But let's go on to the next book, you know, which I think is an yes. excellent, an excellent way in and particularly speaks to us here in the UK and for those outside of the UK for them to understand, you know, Britain, slavery and the myth of abolition, a yeah. controversial t- title for some people, you know, n- not on this call, but, you know, but for, you know, but, you know, the, you know, I think that was, yeah, let's have a talk about, you know, what is it, you know, what is the contents of that book? And why did and why did you you write it? Yep. Because you know you do talk about you know that that Britain likes to shove down our throats that they ab- abolish slavery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I'll that's, let you, um, I I'll let you take Eric it from Williams, there, my brother. Eric Williams uh, has the quote. It's I'll paraphrase it. It's something like, if you were to listen to British historians, you would get the impression that Britain got involved with slavery just for the satisfaction of abolishing it. <laughs> oh. Um, which is ridiculous. But the, the book itself, um, well, I'll, I'll start with how it sort of came to be. So, mm-hmm. uh, so please hold up the book. Hold up the book. Yeah, oh, yeah. So people, me, see yeah the title. so people can see it. So, yeah. again, sort of like, it's, it's got some art as well. Not as much art as the other, as the Black Pass, but there's some art. This one's a sort of a more, a more simple, uh, more specific uh, book, mm-hmm. which has a couple other sort of parts as well. But mm-hmm. um, the story behind this, uh, so in 2018, Black History Month, actually, mm-hmm. um, I was asked to, so we'd only just uh, launched as, uh, and we were in on social media at this point, but so the, mm-hmm. the online school was still in the works. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were asked to give a, a lecture at a university, at Nottingham, mm-hmm. um, something on Black history. Mm-hmm. So... I gave them some suggestions 
Mm -hmm. uh, these are just sort of titles on subjects yeah. that I knew enough about to give a lecture on. And mm -hmm. I was sort of come up with some catchy titles. So it was like a pre colonial Africa one. There was mm -hmm. this one, Britain, Slavery, and Myth and Abolition. There was a couple others. I think there was one on uh, liberation politics and then maybe mm -hmm. something else, maybe on neocolonialism or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then they chose the Britain, Slavery, Myth and Abolition uh, lecture. They said that title mm -hmm. sounds really interesting and it will be really informative. So then developed the lecture notes for it, the slides, delivered the lecture. And then afterwards, I thought, you know what? Maybe I should. Um, kind of like Amos Wilson, some of his books are kind of like, mm. they were originally lectures and they've been sort of rewritten as books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, why don't I just sort of do that? Uh, rewrite it, make it a bit more, um, obviously a lot, extend it a lot more and get more information in there and structure it like an actual um, mm -hmm. sort of miniaturized book, um, put some drawings in there and that can be like a decent uh, read for people because most people, um, have no idea, particularly outside of the UK, most people have no idea mm -hmm. about how involved the British Empire was when it came to enslaving African people. In fact, mm -hmm. most of the time, I've been to the United States a couple of times um, to teach, and obviously I've done online events with people mm -hmm. from the United States, and it's like, they have no clue about mm -hmm. African people's relationship with Britain and Britain's involvement. I mean, most of them don't even realise that America, the United States, was Britain until... Mm -hmm uh the late uh, 18th yeah. century yeah. um so and sort of i think there was a really good way of sort of disseminating all that information um and getting across just how entrenched this country is when it comes to enslavement yeah. um and then yeah abolishing all the myths because we hear constantly whenever there's and i feel like the last maybe it's maybe it's because of my age but mm. the last sort of 10 to 12 years there's been a lot more kind of conversations around britain's involvement in enslaving mm -hmm. african people and how it's so often dismissed mm -hmm. and there's a certain narrative and certain spins they do this PR that's constant and I just thought yeah, yeah why don't we just like blow out always miss out the water yeah and exactly then, uh put everything into the particular yeah. context it's, supposed yeah, to be. It's, been, it's been attacked now anything that we say yeah. is now woke you know yeah I mean the fact that they've taken which is what always happened which is I mean I, I blame a lot of black liberals for allowing yeah. this stuff to happen where yeah stuff that is ours you see it with yeah with woke you see it mm. with hotep yeah uh our, 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 our terms that are often like hotep is just, it's a it's now african, a derogatory term it's almost a I'm saying, term. I'm saying it's an african term and it's not even an, any african term. african term for peace yeah. that's like the most almost sacred term that you can find and yet it's completely been turned into a, a slur mm -hmm. to mean mm -hmm. basically anything you want it to mean and it's the same yeah. with woke um, and now white conservatives apparently everything's too woke and then you yeah. see people buy into it it's like this is supposed to be you know this is our term for meaning you're conscious in yeah, my and, day we called it conscious yeah yeah exactly so i mean that one's probably the next to go <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah no, so it's probably. unfortunate seeing that but um yeah basically abolishing the, the the major myths are well number one britain likes to say that they were the first country to abolish slavery which uh -huh. is not true uh, they they abolished the trade in theory in 1807, but mm -hmm. Haiti completely abolished slavery in 1804. Um, so that's the first myth. Mm -hmm. um, the second myth is how um, benevolent they all were, and how there's apparently this huge. In fact, it's so funny because it's like to them, everybody was against slavery back then. Mm -hmm. Yet somehow everyone also profited from slavery. Yeah. So it's like the double consciousness is there. Mm -hmm. um, so blowing that myth out of the water, uh, blowing the myth. The myths about reparations and the fact mm -hmm. that reparations was actually paid because mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of conversation about reparations now mm -hmm. even in the united states there's like mm -hmm. weird sort of fractured reparations conversations reactionary most of the time yeah yeah that understanding mm -hmm. britain paid reparations just to be enslavers yeah um, exactly and so and then of course the myth that there was no african resistance because even in uh the occasional conversation you'll see on TV that isn't completely biased in Britain's mm. favour, they still won't mention any African resistance. They'll mm -hmm. just mention the abolitionists that were yeah. working, and they won't even mention the black abolitionists, just the white mm. ones. Mm. Um, so all of these myths basically get blown out of the water, and um, yeah, we, sort of, we sort of chronically go through Britain's involvement in enslaving yeah. African people and how yeah. they came to be, not just enslavers, but they were literally the main profiteers. Mm. And in fact, the, the British royal family at one point, mm. their company controlled over 70% of the entire exactly. state. Exactly. exactly. And then people wonder why we celebrate Queen Elizabeth's death. 
um <laughs> exactly, exactly. you know you know they, they say it was regrettable and horrendous yeah, yeah but it's you know but it's, it's how you you were funded it's how it's, exactly. you know you it's, it's you this know. rich because of yeah, yeah there's many natural resources here i i, I think i think <laughs> two of the things that came out of the uh, both books but one of the things that came out of the uh, the uh the britain slavery and the, and the myth of Ab of um of abolition which again mm. digestible you know and really gets to the point a lot of information yeah. a lot of complicated information you've been able to distill into very digestible so oh, thank you excellent thank you. work excellent yeah. work. Thank you very much. excellent work excellent work um but two of the things one you know that uh you know about you say about britain always saying we have you know we abolish slavery the first one haiti Mm -hmm. There you put 17 in 1804 and said, right, okay, anybody, you know, as we as we know, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, um, you know, uh, under Jack Desali, the empire of freedom, as, mm -hmm. as Mama Bello has, has put has taught us. And so that's you know, that's that's massive. Also, that the basis of capitalism is enslavement, mm -hmm. you know, you know, which you know so it's, it's intrinsic to it. And when you break down the areas of London. You know canary wolf which you know and saying that you know that wasn't what it was called first you know and, and yeah. manchester and liverpool and birmingham yeah. and stuff like that you know that he was you know the blood of africans was the was the lifeblood of 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 europe but particularly of england every everybody partook of it mm -hmm. everybody exactly. we wouldn't we wouldn't see the edifices we wouldn't see anything that we see now if there hadn't been a enslavement because it was core to 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 it you know so so you know so these 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 are the things that even for those of us who think we know it's very useful to have this book that kind of like pulls you know that joins the dots you know again and maybe even just reinforces what we what we knew you know and puts yeah, exactly. it into a column so yeah it's a it's an excellent read you know for everybody but again for anybody who's just first coming into it and mm. and especially especially and I think what's what's so good about it is that with this idea of white allies and other allies and this sort of thing and this sort of thing and, and where you know our you know for you know ever since like the 70s the idea of black has been watered down so black isn't doesn't refer to black people anymore you know it's BME and BAM yeah. and everything else you know black is a political name and anybody can be black you know and stuff yeah. like that so everything gets watered down mm -hmm. and about allies and what you need what you what was really useful to have is for when it becomes very confusing about where do you stand and where do you sit and where do you draw the line and who was responsible a book like this makes it very easy to make that clear yeah, and, under, and under, 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 understand that because you're throwing a lot of things at you as you said these myths mm. you know and these myths and the you know the idea that you know, as you say that uh, Satish Kapoor said, you know, to uh, you know, paraphrasing that, um, you know, appealing to people's good nature and nobody appeals to anybody. <laughs> anybody at any revolution has won, but because they appeal to someone's good nature, exactly. it hasn't happened. It never has no. happened. You know, it never will happen. Now, what it mm -hmm. takes, you know, is it takes revolution. That's what it, take, what it takes, and that can be, you know, you can be you can, you can, if you're not clear, you can be quite confused. So a book like this can make things quite clear and mm -hmm. you know and make and make uh, make the history understandable and yeah. understand where where people will sit so yeah again yeah. And, and it, gets, it, it gets rid of some of the dog whistles as well there's, a, there's always this idea of that everyone had slaves at one point yes but africans sold their own people and mm. those ridiculous myths as well get yeah. torn to shreds because they're, they're, they're uh, I mean, at this point, we as we as African people shouldn't even acknowledge. We should mm. just tell people to shut the hell up if they do yeah. that. But obviously, sometimes you have to, unfortunately, intellectualize everything. Well, and yeah. yeah, the tools are there because it's it's a ridiculous dog whistle. Well, we're well, we're seeing it with the woman king. You know, the big exactly. debate, exactly. the big debate, the big debate. Apparently, you know, you're allowed to have a million films about ancient Rome without mentioning <laughs> slavery once. You're allowed to have ancient Greek myths without mentioning what exactly. Aristotle Plato wrote about up um, to. Yeah. And, and all of that. You know, yeah, but, but one African film, I think this is probably the very first, maybe the second African film about African resistance. Mm. Um, the, I think that there was a Nat Turner film, but like, I think it was a few oh, yeah, years yeah. 
but yeah, birth of a nation. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't, but it didn't seem to do. It wasn't that popular by the sound of it. Like it didn't seem to. Like I don't remember even seeing it in the cinema. It, 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 it was in. It was in. It was in, and it was out. And then, and this brother, he has a white wife, and he still did on that. He did on that turn of yeah. film, and then they came after him. They destroy, mm. tried to destroy his career. Well, there you go, exactly. And, and that make... film wasn't even that big. So, so this is like probably the first, I guess, blockbuster of African yeah. resistance. And you get everyone and their mother coming out. Yeah. The, 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 and it's the fact that even historically accurate, the people of Dahomey weren't even particularly involved in mm. uh, dealing with Europeans mm. when it came mm. to enslavement. It's like, mm. So even then... But it's just, yeah, I mean, oh, it's yeah. Uh, nonsense, yeah. continuous nonsense that was being yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. You know, this, these are, and this is why I talk about the culture wars, mm. you know, this whole culture wars about the right wing, the left wing and stuff like this. And it gets very confusing about where you stand <laughs> if you don't know, you know, exactly. because like you say, you know, people who are, you know, you know, you, you can go on YouTube and you tap it, you know, tap in Woman King or whatever. And mm. you'll get every, as you say, everybody having, having an opinion about this and saying, mm-hmm. Well, no historian. Who exactly. are you to tell African actually, Benin? Like, because if you could even spell Benin, if you even heard of it before, or the Dahomey, exactly. how do you know about this? Exactly, suddenly, yeah. suddenly you can say suddenly it's an expert. Yeah. historical. It's not historically accurate. How sure. would you show me where you've written your paper on this? Exactly. Show me where your yeah. history is on this. You don't know. You're just using it as a talking point to bash down. You know, and and people can find themselves. You know. You know this thing of you know going with the you know in the you know either with or against it. So if you're against it, if you're saying there's things like say the book the the film was written by a white woman, so so you know you know the writer director black, everybody else black writer. So you yeah. might have a, a, a say. Well, I disagree with some aspects of the film. Yeah, you can find yourself as a bedfellow with some very right wing people. So you have to be careful about who exactly. where you align yourself. So you have to be very clear about yeah, exactly. that. And this, and I even used your, I, was it was it this? No, I think it was. I think it was the, the slave the slavery of this one, and I think it was this as well. And I was debating with friends online, and I had to, and I said, yeah, but Benin did. There was a king who did fight against it. So you know, so exactly. it is, it, yeah. there was there was it, 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 you know, it's Hollywood. Okay, they've they've you know they've ex, they've extrapolated and said it's eighteen hundred. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah, you're actually. gonna take liberties though in this Hollywood. Yeah, isn't of it? course they are. Of course they People, are. They're not like this. Ain't this ain't a uh, you know BBC Four heavy documentary series? <laughs> exactly, like, exactly. You know, no, nobody, nobody. I've never heard anyone moan once about the historical inaccuracies in Gladiator. And that's that's apparently like that's the great one of the best we've ever made. Oh, oh there's yeah, plenty yeah. of historical accuracies in yeah, there. Oh man, there's some, there's some. But when you see when you see that, and then coming after you know as a. The actress, who's on that? Is it Winova? Oh, uh, is it Viola Davis? Viola Davis, you know, coming yeah. hard after, after, uh, you know, after, her, you know, and you know, trying to, you know, say that the film is a flop and all these sort of things, <clears throat> and all these, all these, all these, yeah, sort of these sort of things. Yeah. So you know, the, so you, you know, we have we this as we talked before about culture wars, you know, mm. and culture, and, you know, and 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 trying to take over, you know, rap, reggae, and stuff like that, and trying to yeah. tell us <laughs> what it means, telling mm-hmm. us. What we should like or not like. Exactly. You know, that's that's the thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you know, and I'm glad you went over with um Britain, slavery and the myth of abolition, some of those those points, those historical yeah. points, because it's that's fantastic. So now we're getting to about eight uh, six twenty-one. We have people on on here that you know on the on the call and you know, I know some of the names and people from organizations are here, my own organization and other organizations are here, but we're just gonna open it up. With you know, just for you know, questions and have a and have a discussion about you know about uh, about you know anything. Bookman Academy. If you've read the books or know of the books, you know you know you know organization, the reason behind it, and so on and so and so on and so forth. Anything that people want to, to yeah, say? Yeah, any, any questions. Um, and we've got here already. And the is already in the chat. He's just made some a couple of comments here already. So he's saying that we are under constant attack from within, uh, from uh, from uh, we'll separate from and from within the so-called global north. Uh, and he's given us a, a Wikipedia link to go, go regarding that. So you know, so there's some information there regarding his point, and also that capitalism is one facet of the larger disease that is elitism. 
which is brought on by antisocial personality disorder. But, you know, oh, it's, interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. In, interesting. Which you know kind of goes to the the idea that uh, Marimba Annie showed in Urugu, saying you know mm. that you know that it's a site you know this it's a it's a well, psychological uh, problem. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, I would say exactly the 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 so brother I follow we follow each other on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from the states, and he makes a very good point. Um, he says focusing specifically on capitalism mm -hmm. as opposed to this European culture of dominance mm -hmm. is like trying to get rid of the spider's web but leaving the spider alone. Absolutely. Very um, good point. Capitalism very is point. one form of European cultural yeah. economic political domination that is Absolutely. working very well and has come from direct from our oppression. But mm -hmm. we have a lot of um, socialist brothers and sisters that uh, don't see the importance of having a sort of race first consciousness oh, and, yes. uh, and realising that this is not just the economic and political system, mm -hmm. this is deeper than that. This yeah, is deep, about deep, domination, deep. cultural domination. domination. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you say, Marimba Annie talks about it, uh, Cedric Robertson talks about it, Shimwazi exactly. talks about it. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, I think more of us need to sort of realise that. Of course, capitalism is just one form that the enemy has taken. As opposed to being the be all and end all enemy, and uh, you know, and you know, so, so, and same we can say about communism and socialism, you know. So you know, yeah, so, you know. I mean, yeah. There's, 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 to be honest, there's been loads of debate, less so the last year, but there mm -hmm. seemed to be last like 2021. I just constantly saw debate with regards to communism, uh, Marxism, and whether that sit within mm -hmm. Pan African nationalism, and what communists. Oh, there's another brother I follow called um, Brother Omawale. He says mm -hmm. that socialists, communists, they're merely radical integrationists. Like, I'd love yeah. to take that line for myself, um, <laughs> but I have to give credit where it's due. That's a yeah, that's and, the perfect, and perfect I think, way of summing it up. I think that's, a, a, again, yeah. a wonderful way of summing it up. You know, radical yeah. integration is very yeah. good. Very so, good. Um, yeah, I feel like, um, of course, communists, Marxists, socialists are very right about capitalism with regards to how mm -hmm. destructive it is. But the historical analysis is obviously going to be rooted within the European framework. And I don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging that. And I don't exactly. understand why they have such a problem with acknowledging yeah, that. Exactly. And, exactly. and it's, 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 we can come up with our own systems based upon our own sacred sciences and histories. I mean, we've, I mean they've got a specific rigid class structure within mm. European societies that's been building for over a thousand years. We didn't have those because yeah. we didn't have uh, the same types of industrial modes of production. We didn't have the same mentality of uh, domination over nature. Mm. We had, like, um, I think it's the Igbo, for example, uh, or what now would be classed as the Igbo in Nigeria. Mm. Um, they had a, a class system mm -hmm. where, depending upon your spiritual state, you could change class. Mm -hmm. So where does that fit into something like communism? Exactly, it doesn't. Exactly. So. exactly. And you know, our idea, you know, the idea of sexism, you know, and you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. we have matriarchal system, patriarchal system, exactly. system, but there was always a balance, you know. So, yeah. you know, so this I mean, know, people don't yeah. understand what patriarchy is most of the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so. They don't understand that black men in particular, but racialized men in general mm. can uh, can and are victims of patriarchy. Like there's no benefit. It's not just because you have whatever genitals you have. You're benefit. Yeah. Um, the harshest sort of patriarchy you go off to the men that are deemed the enemy, which makes yeah, sense. Uh, absolutely, um, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And, and yeah, like you say, within Africa there were completely different systems. I mean, the fact is, it's, to me, it's become so obvious once you study history again. This is why it's so important. The fact that there were so many revolutions led by women. Mm -hmm in the 16th, 17th, 18th century, 19th century. I can't even think of one European revolution led by a woman. So, I mean, that there shows the difference in exactly. gender attitudes, sex attitudes, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. And but, all you have to do, all you have to do is look at, you know, the, as you call them, like the Black Avengers part two, you know, the yeah. organizations that have been sprung up, you know, UNIA, yeah. you know, you know. Um, exactly. You know, uh, Nation of Islam. You know mm. the you know Rastafarian mo mo movements. You know organizations, even my own organization, PACM. You mm. look who's who look who's who's at the who's at the yeah. the store. Who's who the mass of the members are. 
who's okay. in, in that? Who who are who who are the the most dedicated? Women? It's women. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's exactly. women. And then and often women are put into leadership positions yeah. based on their merits, based on their everything great that they do. And it's funny because like a lot of black nationalist rhetoric mm. has been retroactively determined to be somehow the most sexist organizations of all yeah. time, the most patriarchal organizations of all time, when there was so much involvement by women in leadership positions, like the Black Panther Party, for example, over 60% of their uh, members were women. Yet, for some reason, there's this, again, mythology that they were the most sexist organization since sliced bread throughout the 60s and 70s. It doesn't make any sense. But again, it's like, like you say, it's the cultural, it's who's controlling the narrative, who's telling us our history. Exactly. And like you, you say about the Asian Revolution, I think, you know, you're just saying, you know, that, you know, is that, Sorry, I can't, I can't. Is that you know, that um, a third of the, of the, of the of the Asian Revolution was women. And since, you know, it was, you know, um, you know, and that, so that basically works out that nearly every single woman in 80 was part of the yeah. revolution, you know. Exactly. So. But, we, you know, we've got, um, uh, yes, yeah, so we have, uh, another chat in there for Ndugo Marias also gives us people can look at, but we also have our dear sister Jackie from the PASCF who has a, who has a question. So please, uh, Jackie, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you, um, Brother Imani, has um, already congratulated um, our Brother Tyrone for the excellent work that um, he is doing and I wanted to add my own voice and that of the PASCF to that congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. um, It's just wonderful to see you as a young brother um, doing what you're doing and um, a focus on our education and a focus on involving those who are left out at the moment. Mm -hmm. Too many of our older people are carrying the baton without having a younger crew to pass it on to. That's uh, 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 our organization is facing that issue and not just our organization. I think that that's across the card. But in terms of the books, I wanted to, to ask whether you had a plan to introduce these books into schools, into other um, of our grassroots organizations into libraries, into the same university that you spoke of that invited you. How can you use that contact to ensure that this educational material is part and parcel of what they're utilizing? So thank um, you. Um, thank you for the, the, the praise, firstly. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, well, I always. I'm very humbled with people's responses. But in terms of um, utilizing them as teaching material, in terms of the schools, I feel that, I mean, I'd be very surprised, maybe particular individuals, but in terms of curriculum sort of wide, I'd be very surprised there would be any interest within uh, the curriculum side of things of in integrating these types of books into um, on the school level because it literally is anti-establishment mainstream schooling. And I can't see schools. It's like, so similar to how Malcolm X said, um, only a fool would let his enemies teach his children. I don't think our goal should be of introducing it into schools. I think, like you say, it should be within libraries, within organizations, within community centers. Those are the places that I would love to. And I, I have had a few places um, stock these in different libraries and stuff. But yeah, community centers, those are the places I think that we need to be um, pushing for this type of education. Uh, so directly at the grassroots and not being facilitated by the sort of white establishment, by white teachers and their biases. Um, in terms of universities, I have had some universities reach out to put it into their libraries. But again, in terms of introducing it as an integral part of any sort of curriculum, I, I can't see that being the case and having it as a, as a handy source for students to actually go and check out within the libraries, 100%. Um, and yeah, it's in a few libraries so far in terms of getting it sort of a wide push. Um, 
I would probably have to find some sort of contact in order to help that. But again, the goal is more um, directing and producing our own education as opposed to sort of supplementing the education that is already in existence. Because again, I mean, it's either going to be, it would be number one, it would be absorbed and shifted in terms of its content to a place that was very safe for the mainstream. Or number two, the mainstream will be utilising it in order to basically stab itself in the back. Um, so I wouldn't be, I, I can't really see that happening realistically. And I'm not necessarily sure it's even uh, particularly something we should push too much, as long as we have it within our own places. I think it would be more important for us to build up within our own community centres so we can eventually develop our own schools, have our own curriculums, having that as more of a goal as opposed to pushing it as an integration tool within the mainstream school, as well, I'd say even if one is sort of more easy than the other. <laughs> May I make an addition? Oh yeah, 100%. May I say to you uh, a little saying that we have, nothing beats a try but a failure, and that there are more of our people in their system than there are in ours. So wherever our people are, we should be pushing to introduce them to the material. Once they get the materials in the schools and we, we can then start. And another thing is to look at our unions. All of the unions here have black sections. What are those black sections doing? Contact, mm. Make contacts within, um, that's supposed to be our economic hub. You know, these are the people who are employing us. And, and so, yeah, if you make contact with the unions, Maybe Brother Glenroy Watson is a good place to start. Lee Jasper, all of these people who have got contacts within the Union Black sections and tell them, let them introduce you and invite you to speak when they have their forums. Very important. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would, I would 100% be up for that. Thank Pushing you. The knowledge, spreading it within. Like you say, yeah, we need to reach people where they're at as well. Um, but yeah, of course, the education is, is fundamental in terms of organizing and changing our situation. Mm -hmm. I think as well, uh, Doug Jackie made a very good uh, point because we, we you know we have contacts with uh, Unison and their black section. There are resources there. And, you know, and I think you want to be kind of like, we always think, you know, like guerrilla warfare. You know, hit and you know, you know, and just hit and disappear. So sometimes, if you can use their own resources against them, yeah, use their own resources. So, you know, so, so um, don't discount it too much. I actually, take your point about we should have our own, but you know, take into that point. Um, hold on for one second. Yes, I, know, I know, but no, it's a thing because I need because he's yeah. saying that he's going to be thingy, and I think thought that he'd be there that late. So I'm just saying he, he, he'll, he'll be about eight thirty. No, if, if he eats, he's going to be be it'll be about nine 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 thirty. Yeah, 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 about that time. Yeah, that'll yes, be about that time. That, I'm just asking if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, but, but, yeah, but, I yeah. Know, but All right, so uh, apologies and uh, uh, family, you know, there's some stuff going, going on. My son is out, is out and uh, we just do to having that conversation. So, no uh, so anyway, yes. So yes, do, do think of those, uh, those, those points. So um, other people in the, in the, in the call. So anybody else who want, wishes to make a point or, you know, you know, I can raise a hand, you know, I can to, to make a point wants to put uh, a point to the conversation or uh, add you know put a question directly to brother tyrone 
No? Um, there, there was, sorry, me again. There was oh, yeah. something that um, Brother Tyron said that I think that we must use whatever opportunity we get to repeat it. Um, when, when Brother Tyron said that Britain paid reparations to our enslavers, Mm -hmm. Yes. You need to make the point that we also paid reparations to them. Yes. This is the loan that was taken out. Mm -hmm. We, who were taxpayers, yeah. repaid that loan. And exactly. we repaid that loan unknowingly up until 2015. So we, we, we these people have no conscience. We expect mm -hmm. conscience from them, but mm -hmm. they don't know exactly. what it means. As my grandmother would have said, if it come up and smack them in the face, they wouldn't <laughs> recognize it. Yeah. And we must use all of our spaces to continue mm. to ram home that message to people, their people, as well as our people. Yeah. That they cannot be trusted. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, you, you said the exact same. Happening at the moment, yeah, can't be trusted. They yeah. want that they can be, but we know differently. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's Kwame Teresa said the exact same thing. He said, um, in order for non-violence to work, your opposition must have a conscience. These people don't have, <laughs> they don't have one. So um, yeah, the fact that they had the descendants of enslaved African people paying reparations to the descendants of the enslaved, it's, 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 it's ridiculously, shocking but then it's also not shocking so it's almost like typical of european imperial nations that have this they have this kind of like a, this dissonance of they have to appear to be so liberal and so accepting now and oh yes, it's all behind us it was a dark moment in history while at the very same time continuing that practices doing things like getting uh, descendants to pay the enslavers is is is, is ridiculous. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and the pepper kai is right. I'm sorry, brother pepper kai. Sorry, allow me to say one thing while it's mm -hmm. in my head as well. Mm -hmm. Is that I believe that there was a freedom of information request made to find out what individuals and institutions this loan was being repaid to, and that information has not yet surfaced because they're trying to keep that quiet. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what they, they did, they, they had a few years ago, David Dollar Soli did that documentary, mm -hmm. Britain's Forgotten Slave Owners, where they managed to track some of the uh, plantation owner families down. And then we see guys like, we see a guy like David Cameron popping up. Yeah. Uh, whose descendants were enslavers. Of course, we all know about like Barclays Bank and mm -hmm. Brown Brothers Harriman, all these institutions. Um, but yeah, it, it literally infested every corner of uh, modern British society and it's the, the basis mm -hmm. of this society. Yeah, nobody seems to, apparently you should get over all of this slavery stuff because it's the past, <laughs> even though it literally is what made the modern world, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just to say, you know, from reading the book, you know, the, uh, the brother does uh, touch on that in the, in, in the book. So, you know, so that's, you know, it's, it's uh, beautiful, but yes, you know, these are, points for us to take on from that. Um, uh, MJ Pepakai, you wanted to you want to make a comment or put a question? First, let me say um, jumbo to all the brothers and sisters in the gathering. Before I go on to talk about um, this wonderful book, books that um, our brother Tyrone has put together, we must be very careful about terminology and definition because who defines when? We must understand that reparation is about repair, making good a wrong. So there's no way we as African people can be involved in giving money to white folks who have Rain so much atrocity on us. And Britain giving money to their own people for this atrocity is not reparation. We must be very clear about that. I'm not even sure what to call it. 
but it's a big fraud. It's a big injustice. But that's how these people are. Justice is not in the psyche. So it's one crime after another. But it has nothing to do with reparation. Yes, we've contributed to it, can we kill this? But one thing is for certain, it's not about reparation. Reparation is about our demand. And we're too feeble in the demand. That's why we ain't getting nothing. But put that aside. Let me talk about something more pleasant and more celebratory. I first met young Tyrone two years ago at a book fair in Birmingham. And I was very impressed with the book because the way it was put together was a kind of a novel idea. The colors, you know, and for a young man, I glanced at it and the presentation was impressive. And I really want to stock it, but having so much work to do, we kind of lose connection. And um, I can't remember the full story, or we connect again, but we did. Mm. And that actually happened to find time to read a little bit of it. And Brother Man, you have it spot on when you said it's in a similar vein as from the broader file. Because as a bookseller for over 50, 50, 52 years, my introductory book always in the old days, Malcolm X, Afro-American history. Because when somebody is green, they haven't read much, they're searching, I find a page, put it in their hand, and they never give it back to me. They buy it. And I find the same thing I do with Brother Five. In fact, my famous chapter is about the politics of here. And when I put that in people's hand and they read it, they can't argue with it. They know it's right and they buy it. And you, you're so right. This, um, the African past, in fact, in my head, is the African past, is the African present, and is the African future. That is the title of the book. Um, I browse a little at the um, Britain and the slave a bit. And I said browse because I really don't have time. When people see me with whole of books selling, they believe I read all of them. And they have no idea that I only know titles, the authors, and I know a little bit about it. That's as far as it goes, because there's so much work put in to get in the book and to pass them on to our people. So that's my role. My own education suffers because I really don't have the time. But the little bit that I read, you know, because if I tell you, I try to read one of Dr. Ben book and I have to put it down because they're written in such a highfalutin way that they're not, um, um, what, 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 what word should I use? They say they, they're hard going. <laughs> I leave it at that. They are because, academic. Yes. <laughs> For example, um, Sheikh Antaliyap, the African original civilization, a fantastic, masterpiece, but you have to put in some reading. Mm. And this is what I love about Malcolm X books. When you read a book as if you're having a conversation, and even if you couldn't read, you haven't been to college, you don't know the door of a university, if somebody read them to you, you can understand it. You know? So, on the level that Tyrone has written, it's plus, 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 plus. And I love the point um, Sister Jackie made as to how to get these books to wider, wider, wider um, public. Because 
a wealth of information is there. But there's information in so many other books. But it's the way in which it's put together. Very concise, not a way for waffle, to the point, but in a way that people can understand clearly. And they'll be motivated to read it and to recommend it. So now the material is in, in fact, um, I'm in the process of sending some books to Chicago to one of my um, co-distributor, Frontline Publication. And I don't know how much copies um, Taru never turned, but I want to get those out to, to Chicago. Mm. And there's two sources in Chicago. There's Frontline Books. There's, um, what's the other one now? Um, I'll, 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 I'll tell you when I remember it. Also get some up to New York, get some up to, um, to Baltimore, because we know a fair amount as to what has happened to our brothers and sisters in the States. They don't even know we're here in mm. most cases. Much less that we're writing books. And while we're on the subject of books, mm. one thing is so impressive right now is the, um, the mushroom of writing of books, particular sisters, Right now, all Libra children's book. So impressive because we have been so accustomed to getting those wonderful books put together by brothers and sisters in the States. But at the level of writing and publishing and distribution of black books, in particular by sisters, mainly them and their children, it is so impressive, you know. And this whole business of taking responsibility and self-reliance, it has been, as I said, most encouraging. And the work that Tyrone is doing um, is very exemplary. And we have to push these books as hard as we can because we know they'll bring tremendous rewards and benefit. No, thank you, Papa Kai. Thank you so much. Humbled. Oh, no. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And, you know, the uh, Pratt and Congress movement, we will, you know, uh, be pushing your books, you know, as, you know, thank and you. the Bookman Academy, you know, as hard as, you know, as, as, yeah. uh, as, uh, as hard as we can as well, you know, and, you know, and the relationship between, ourselves you know these these uh, uh organizations we want to make it stronger and wider yeah. and you know and you know working together you know and with other organizations as well um the i just want to see if there's any more queries because i have a, have a a question before we start to wrap up um in, my brother you was talking about individualism and you feel that you know that how that is something that is really uh, uh, attitude that is has crept in with our young people mm. you know you know so can you talk a little bit more about what you think you know regarding uh, regard regarding that and you know and it's and it's in, and its impact because we as organizations that have been around for 20 30 years in the case yeah. of you know what's 40 years for the Palestinian congress movement and pacf has been around for you know 10 or so, so years all of us you know would love to have more young people joining us but you know, you know, we find it diff difficult in ways of how to engage with that. So yes, individualism. But please, you know. Yeah, I think uh, the modern. I mean, with sort of corporate media, they call it social media, but it's corporate media, um, and the ways in which <clears throat> there's this kind of. Uh, the elites are getting richer and richer and the, even the sort of working classes within the sort of Western imperial core are being suppressed. And then not even to mention the African brothers and sisters back home, there's, um, there's become this kind of this push and this marketing push of like, you can also join the top if you just follow these ridiculous steps. And they're like a whole heap, host of like these self-help books, 
these um, books that sort of tell you how to acquire some sort of individualist seat at the table. And those of us that seem to be reading seem to some for some reason be sucked into this propaganda and this marketing that we need to read these particular books that encourage individualism in order to become rich and benefit from the crumbs of empire as opposed to seeing ourselves as part of a wider community mm-hmm. that cannot sort of exist without you know your brothers and sisters around you and the fact that there's this idea that uh people can be self-made if they've mm-hmm. made it as if nobody in their life nobody in their community has ever helped them I mean, it's the fact that particularly for Af- this, is, this is just people who stop but mm-hmm. for african people it's 10 times the fold because it's literally mm-hmm. if not for people shedding their blood you would not even be able to eat in the same restaurant as these people that you're living next to without people literally being murdered by the millions and fighting for their freedom you would still be in chains on plantations so and but then for some reason a lot of us have been sucked in and conned into this propaganda that oh yeah we can just make it if i cut off all my friends and do this and be ruthless Mm. and backstab people and only ever care about myself and look after myself and this self-care kind of movement's mm-hmm. going on, then somehow I've made it. Like, we need to divorce ourselves from that mentality and mm-hmm. divorce ourselves from a worship of money as well, um, mm. materialism, which again comes into being propagandized through what's perceived to be black culture, hip-hop, yeah. etc. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's about sort of returning to the source, returning to the roots of community and understanding community. Um and how much community is needed and how much community has done for us past and present and then how much then we need to do for our future community. Cause and sort of seeing the world in a very more sort of Afrocentric holistic view. Um, in terms of getting younger people, I do feel like there's a gap between mm-hmm. um, the older generation and the younger generation in terms of within the movement. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not too sure why that is um, I can speak from the young perspective and for mm-hmm. well, the reasons I've just said in terms of not understanding community, not understanding the importance of uh, history from an African viewpoint, not understanding the politics of what goes on and the politics of gaining power. But then um, I don't know, you probably know more than me why there's from the elder side more of a disconnect. I'm sure all of you uh, watching and listening will probably know more. Um, has there been like a reluctance to teach the younger generation from you guys? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, um, because I guess it is a two way street as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the younger people do need somebody to teach them. And usually that is an older person. So I don't know if you guys have like attempted to teach youngers and they're just not interested or not engaged or, um, yeah. So I, I guess there's just, there, there is definitely some sort of disconnect, um, unfortunately, and we need to try and bridge that gap a lot more. Um, and I think as well for my generation, because maybe less so in the last maybe 10-ish years, mm-hmm. but throughout the 2000s, when we were children, the the harshest forms of racism did, like, if I sort of look at documentaries that are about the early mm-hmm. 90s and the 80s, compare them to my life as a kid in the 2000s, it seems like there was a definite difference. I don't know for whatever reason. Um, and I think in, in 20, so maybe because of that, they, a lot of people my age and younger genuinely believe things are better and genuinely believe that integration is the way to sort of go and just get a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the 80s, you know, there were the Brixton uprisings, the you know, uprisings across, up and down the country constantly. And in the 2000s, they weren't, it seemed to be a lot sort of more, there was a lot less sort of revolutionary energy. And I feel like mm-hmm. if maybe the last few years has kind of returned a little bit, you know, there's been like murders mm-hmm. of Brother Chris Carver, Edson DeCosta, etc., Mark Duggan, a rest in power to all of them. And so maybe it's sort of returned a little bit of the revolutionary energy, but yeah, it's, it's, there's definitely something there and the gap definitely needs to be bridged uh, sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, for our observations and, you know, we're still looking at it and still trying to understand it ourselves. I think that one of the things is that, you know, organisations were very prevalent in the 70s and 80s early night early 90s and going on they you know they started to you know, fall by the wayside for different reasons you know you know the organizations you know kind of imploded you know let members left they, they weren't involved it was also 
you know, when you're talking about the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you're talking about the zeitgeist in three odd times. It was very much, you know, it was not only was it, it was set of one of that, it was cool to be conscious. It was cool to yeah. be Rasta. It was cool to be in that because the music supported it, the culture supported it. So when I was growing up and when we was at the, at the, the, in the universities in around the, early 90s going into you know 95 94 93 um you know a lot of the universities had african societies and these african societies were pan-african they were nationalist they were you know in, they were springing up all over the place and you know i was involved in the pan-african congress movement at that time so it was coming from that kind of field but it was happening all over and we was coming together it was it just felt like a you felt the surge everybody was thinking the same sort of way yeah. Then that kind of dropped off, and so I think that there was a period that went into like the the the, the two thousands, where young people coming up, who weren't there was a gap. There's a, there's coming up. There wasn't a physical presence of organisations around, and the music and the culture didn't support it as well. I remember reading you something that you were saying that you know that you know that in round why that you and the one of the founders the co-founders uh, you know there wasn't the organization there wasn't the book club there wasn't the thing around you so you know you said i'll create my own you know yeah exactly but you know and so so you know i think there's there's that i think as well there was a big push you know culturally that you know those of us who were first second third generation never saw ourselves as british you know we were other we were other and it was quite clear to us we were other there was no there was no this generation coming up and now the fourth fifth generation there's yeah. a big push to assimilate yeah, you see there's it, a though. big push there's a massive push to say your British you know free. now you see the commercials you know you see you see a black guy in a, in a, in yeah. a he was you know with it was a white partner yeah. and you, you could easily swap him with a white person. His cadence, how he talks, how he dresses, he's no different. Yeah. And this is progress. This is where yeah. there's, there's, no, there's, there's nothing, there's not, and when, and when there is a, <laughs> there is a, a, a advert where it's a black family being black culture, not even saying like continental Africa, just black. You yeah, see yeah. social media go crazy with people, you know, cursing it and stuff like that you know so there's yeah so there's a big push and if, yeah. you talk, if you talk if you talk to that generation you know they will say they're british yeah, you know, you know, yeah. There's, 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 there's no you know you know they're friends fully uh, infested. their yeah, friends exactly. are you know united colors of benetton i've got a, i've got a turkish friend i've got this kid i've got this friend you know and we all talk the same there was a time when i was a kid when you could tell on the bus a white person who's trying to sound black, you say, oh, "I can hear, I can hear you." Yeah, yeah you, no, you cannot. Te- you cannot tell when you hear them talking. They're talking the same. You say, "You, you think you're hearing a black person?" You turn around and it's some people. You go, "Oh my God, You know, so you know there was. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, there the was a time we used to talk. Talking. You know, we used to talk wigger and all this sort of stuff. And this, is, <laughs> you know, but you know this kind of thing of when you talk about fam. And fam is your for my end. And that can be anybody that you, mm. you know, that, and that's a real change. And so yeah, this idea sure. that, you, yeah. that you are, that you are, this is part of the culture. And when the uprisings were happening, especially yeah. starting, um, you know, during, you know, COVID and during, you know, the, the whole, mm. you know, um, uh, George Floyd, Floyd mm. one thing that often came up that I heard young people saying, is why why is this happening the generation two or four was like going, what do you mean why is this happening what mm. did you get the memo because we got the memo we know yeah. why they're uh, happening. that's why that's why i see there's a disconnect there's because, a disconnect and i've, I've, disconnect. I've kind of speak i'm speaking to it now i've kind of maybe clocked what a big reason was um it should kind of come to me now is the fact that formal apartheid fell in the mid 90s so maybe that is the crux because that was throughout the seventies, eighties, Britain is economically funding African neo slavery within the continent, mm-hmm. and then suddenly that's taken away, and then propaganda's produced that shows that Britain yeah. pretended that they were always for justice. And I guess yeah. some of us, well, I guess most of us weren't even born there necessarily, but the generation that was part of that would then. 
be sort of they've absorbed all this post-apartheid propaganda that shows that oh yeah we're accepting you're one of us kind of thing as long as you behave a certain way and do certain things so maybe that is it's as simple as that yeah um, I, I maybe think that's, that's like a, a, a huge a huge reason yeah I, I think so that was a big oh. that was a big flag you know of mm. a trend but there was also you know about um uh the kind of neoliberal uh, use of capitalism. So they basically, what was happening from the 70s to 80s is that, you know, that, you know, say for like, say we take the UK, you, the, there was an industry, people could get jobs. Mm. By the 80s to 90s, by the mid 80s and stuff like that, those jobs, went, right. those factories yeah. went, those went, yeah. went. And so the whole idea of moving your, your, your company to Thailand or to somewhere else, where you could get made for pennies. Mm. So, the, the, so, so, you know, the black family was attacked and destroyed because, me, you know, men couldn't get jobs. Mm. Whereas women were being targeted for the, for the white collar, you know, in, you know, nursing, you know, civil service, public mm. service and things, like, and things like that. So that pulled the family apart. There wasn't this yeah. unity, you know. There was a time, remember there was a time when you was a kid, ten, you was about ten, you know, and younger. But before that, there was a time where people grew up, and there wasn't such, the thing. The idea of a baby mother was weird. Families were together. Up yeah. in the 50s, seventies, families were together. Eighties mm. and nineties, this thing of baby mother and stuff like that was going because there was this push that came from the music as well. The way to show your masculinity, if you couldn't have a job, if you can have a job, is to have plenty of pitney. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is this is how you yeah. So there yeah. was there's all of there's all of this push that there, there was this push, and so what we've had is we're having a culture war attack on African pe people, and so you have a generation growing up with this, where you know you're having a family split. There's no there's no job, and there's a big push now, not so much to say you're other and to keep on pushing that you're other, but to say integrate you. Mm, yeah, and exactly. a big push, you know, and that idea of we gave our children over to other people to educate, and when you do that, and when you do that, when you do that, then they follow that culture. You know, mm -hmm. you give you give yourself your children over to someone else for eight hours of a day. Exactly, it's a massive amount of time. Surprised? Why are you surprised when they come back and they, they <laughs> exactly they, yeah. that sound British? It's logical, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's the thing. That's the thing. So yeah. there's, there's there's that. So. Um, there's, there's many things we have to look at, and there was, you know, the, you know, there's also the, the organisations that weren't around, that were around in the evening in the 90s, but weren't around in the noughties, the 2010s and stuff like that, for people yeah. like yourself to join, to, you know, to yeah. settle yeah. them out. Um, but we have Sister Jackie. Uh, she's, she's gone off screen, so she may, when she comes back, she can, uh, she can put, her, uh, put her point. Um, the thing I would say that I would say that we've got another book that would be useful to see because it is as M, as L, and the Pepper Kai, L, the Pepper I was saying that seeing, you know, you know, books coming from the UK, you know, the Robin Walker and then, then there's, there's you and there's Cutler and there's, there's others, but, you know, it's wonderful to see. But one of the things when you've like listed at the back, you know, organizations, yeah there's been there's 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 hardly any organizations that are from the uk there or from europe black organizations mm -hmm. yeah which they are you know they may be small and stuff but they were there and they were uh, did, they did they were influential up until a point so it's yeah. good for you to have that research because one of the things that you could come away from from reading your, your book is just the point is that all the organizations are outside the UK and America yeah. and Africa, when there were organisations and still some still still exist right here in the U UK and yeah. this idea of individualism, if it's not there, I'll create my own. Or even if it is there, I'd rather be, you know, I'd rather be the king of my own or queen of my own rather than, you know, this communalism. Yeah. Let me exactly. build what is already there rather yeah. than let me start from the ground up with my own, with my own thing. And that is that is you know that is one of the things that we see in the PACM that we want to join the dots between the organisations yeah, and ourselves. Exactly, get everyone linked. 
get everyone linked, you know. They're strength so they, in numbers. Strength in numbers. But we have to, you know, but it's also about, you know, there are there are organizations that you do not have to. They may not be big and shiny as you would like it to be, but you may not have to create it all yourself. Some of it is already sure. right there. You just have to join and build and build and build, and build, and build it. Yeah, continue to build exactly. Okay, so Sister Jackie, your hand is, is, your, is he still still there? I think the hand has gone down. Now, you, 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 my hand, sorry, my hand went down. I was going to say that I needed to step away for two minutes. So yeah. Um, that's why I had my hand up. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Right. So we're coming there today. We've gone a little bit over, uh, but since it's our own, it's our own meeting, we can go as long as we like. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, but we won't keep people longer than they, than much longer than we, than we said. So just, just, just for again, just looking at the, the people on the call, is there any, any points that anybody wish to make a final point or comment? No. Okay. Uh, okay. So, what we'll do is we'll just to bring it to uh, uh, bring it to a close. Um, we do encourage everybody to you know pass on the Bookman Academy. It's in the chat. You know, pass on the Bookman Academy so you know that young people, older people, anybody you know, can go on to there. You know, get the books. You know, so, you know, let people know about the books, um, but also the courses. Yeah, the, the mm. courses because you know they're having, all free, and they're the all free, are free. Which is, you know, which is absolutely amazing. You know, because my brother, I know that you must be doing other things in order to fund this. You know, you're doing <laughs> other things to, to fund this. You yeah. know, because this isn't alone going to pay you. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, so, so the dedication of putting on these courses and making this available, you know, across the diaspora, whoever wants to use, you wants to use it, who can speak English, is fantastic, you know, in, and it takes a lot of dedication. There's, there's a hell of a lot of work and sacrifice goes into producing this. People may not think, I think that there's a hell of a lot of stuff like that, and it takes a lot of bravery to say, I'm going to put myself out there and, you know, you know for everybody to have a, an opinion of it. And actually do that and stand and stand by your guns because there's one thing to do it it's another thing to stand by your guns and have a political view and say it clearly and not and not shilly shally and not try to you know you know what it would sell better if i kind of said it this way you don't do this yeah, <laughs> yeah much exactly. respect much respect so thank like, you, well, thank you. you know you know we love you we think you're fantastic we we'll give you much strength and, and you, honor keep on going my brother and we'll support you any way we can so please support the Bookman, Bookman Academy. Um, just want to give, you know, for, you know, because everybody here knows who the Pan-African Congress movement is, but people who will be watching this online and never, never come don't know who the Pan-African Congress movement is. So I'm just going to give a brief explanation of who the Pan-African Congress is. This is our logo behind, behind us, and I'm just going to share my screen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone can see that, yes? Yeah, yeah, we can see oh, okay. it. Okay, okay, so the Pan African yes. Movement, that was wonderful. So, the, the We the Pan African Congress Movement, or PACM as we are known, is a revolutionary Pan African organization holding to the principles and practice of race first. Revolutionary Pan Africanism is the political expression which takes many forms but always seeks to defend the humanity and sovereignty of the African masses of the world against domination and exploitation. The organization is a national organization of the African masses. We believe that it is only by adopting revolutionary Pan-Africanism that we can realize the aim of total liberation. And we have seven aims of the organization, but the first aim of the organization, you know, sums up everything that, you know, that comes out after it. And that is, the total unconditional liberation of Africa, African people and our lands worldwide, and the government and protection of the United States of Africa. So that's who, that's who, that's who, who, who we are. We've been around about 40 years and we have branches across the country, 
you know, there's, there's not a lot of us and we're always looking for, uh, for members, but, you know, we're more than happy to do things like we're doing now with working with brothers and sisters who are in the same vein, same work, work you know, and, you know, it's not that there's not enough people, there's not enough people, there's enough people already, and there's not enough, there's not enough resources, there's plenty of resources. It's about how can we join together and work in one way and understand that our differences of how we see things are very minor compared to the many things that join us together. So we as a Pan-African Congress movement are very happy to uh, be in work in conjunction with the Bookman Academy and the, our beloved PAS CF represented by Sister Jackie, uh, Sister Jackie there. Uh, okay. One question before I sign mm. out. How do we order the books? Oh, on the website, um, bookmanacademy.com. Just go to products okay. and you can see it there. And it's just the same way you'd order anything else online. It's very simple. Yeah. Uh, I want to know a bit more about the PSEF. Okay. Well, well, uh, well uh, Sister, Sister Jackie, would you please give an explanation of, of the PAS, PASCF? It's, it's amazing because um, as Brother Imani spoke about the Pan-African Congress movement, I kept in my head saying ditto, ditto, ditto. So the only, the only difference is that we have a different history. Um, we have been going, I think the organize, I joined the organization in 2010. And I believe that it's been, it's been in existence maybe for um, well over 20 years. Um, at the moment, we have a program where we do um, four lectures a year almost. We do um, ALD and we do ALD um, in conjunction with other organizations who want to join us to do African Liberation Day. We do the Marcus Garvey Annual Memorial Lecture in um, the, the 10th of June. Um, and this year we did our 15th lecture. We do the IT Revolution Memorial Lecture in August. And this year we have just completed our 16th lecture. And we um, have a commemoration for our youth that were um, massacred at Soweto. And we do that um, once a year. And we do um, sessions online at the moment, since lockdown, um, fortnightly. Prior to um, the COVID scam, we had, um, we met regularly every Friday evening in Brixton and did our sessions at 336 Brixton Road. And after the announcement was made about COVID, we and lockdown, we then moved to fortnightly sessions. Um, <clears throat> if you are able to send me your details, events at gmail.com, I can share with you our upcoming um, session which happens this Friday. So, yeah. Or I can send it to Brother Papakai or Brother Imani and they can share it with you. Yeah, that way. That's, <laughs> that's us in a nutshell, basically. Wonderful. If you can put that your the email um, address in the chat so that, so that so people can, you know, later they'll be able to see this and look at the chat and they can, they can um, um, know how to contact the PASCF. Within Dudu and Mari, you don't have to worry. We're in the same house because that's my son. So he, he will get he will get that information. No way about don't worry about that. So um, yes, so wonderful. Thank you, Dada Jackie. Uh, Dada Jackie. And I was I was going to ask you to just talk about this Friday about your event. So I'm very glad that you you uh, you've uh, been able to be prompted to have that conversation with you, and you could get to promote that. And the last thing that we want to promote is regarding the, um, now, MZ Pepperkai. before I get into this, we may be talking about the same thing. So MZ Pepperkai, is there anything you want to say? Because I was going to talk about the GoFundMe. Well, yes, before you come to that, <laughs> because what I'm about to say will lead into that. You see, we must remember 
that the black bookshop still exists. They're struggling, but they still exist. So online is not the only avenue in which we get our books. <clears throat> and in fact, Brother um, Tyrone, the name Bookman Academy, one day I must have that conversation with him. I don't know if you have time as to how we come to that name. But that's a very important name. Because had it not been for Bookman, he wouldn't be sitting down and enjoying the limited freedom that we as a people have. And that is why must always remember the tremendous sacrifice and commitment that our brothers and sisters made in Haiti that break the chains from our necks, from our bodies, from our minds um, in such a spectacular way. So it's something spiritual, it's something again that the name have so much substance that this young man has infused that energy, that spiritual energy, that awesome liberation miracle in his writing. So the bookman spirit is bubbling and bubbling and, you know. And again, somebody came to me and said that um, they're not too sure about this, Bookman Academy people, and they may be scamming the, um, the GoFundMe. I don't know where they come up with that ridiculous idea. So I'm glad that we're on this platform. I'm going to settle that clearly once and for all. Because the Mart Center is the home of Pepper Kai Books, and we haven't had. Um, Tarun to speak and to do a book launch at the center for the simple reason he's going with peers and he's crucial in helping to raise money to make that happen, which we're going to talk about um, for their money. But very quickly, what is the numbers of people viewing this? First question. Uh, the number of people, the, the number of people is quite low because everybody you can see on screen are the people who are who are, who are here, but we we won't take that as a as an indication because once we put it onto YouTube, it will go up into the into the, into the hundreds. Of... But 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 the reason I say it, I spend hours because in most cases you can only send one message at a time, mm -hmm. and I've got umpteen people in different groups. And I spent hours and I've sent out hundreds and hundreds of invites. Now I know October is very busy. People is in different places, in different engagements. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I've never seen the numbers this low. So thanks to um, YouTube, they had to boost it up. Yes, exactly, and you know, you know, we we take it, we take it as you know is that um, we're never, we want more, and we always hope for more, but we're net, we we are never disheartened by what we get because you never know who you're speaking to, you're never knowing who you, you know, because it's that one conversation, and we can all point to that conversation, that that music, that book that thing that you had that turned a light bulb or something and you don't know who that person is so you know so you know so you know so you know even you know the k by you know in 80 there was a handful of people who came together to have it and that led to 1791 to the you know the freedom of 18 you know 13 years later so you know so you know it's about the spirit because very by the very fact of us coming together and and stimulate and join on the, the the spirit of bookman and all the answers that we called upon we're causing ripples we're causing that and we know that we are we have to move away from thinking in that lineal european western way and thinking in that more holistic way because 
the people who uh, we want to be here are here. They are, and who's supposed to hear it is supposed to be hearing it, and we'll hear it after after this. So, you know, it's you know, it's uh, this started as an idea in the brother's head. It wasn't even real, yeah, and he made it into reality. Him and others, but he put this into into reality, and it was years in the making. Now, you know, if he if he was waiting for people to come around him to tell him and pat him on the back or give him some money to make it, it would have never happened. Exactly. Yeah. But you That's know, it. so you know, so I done business about who who's here, who's not here, because the work is being is, is happening, and we're we're standing on the the shoulders of those of those people. We know that when we come to self on our own mind and our own spirit. We're limitless and boundless, and there's mm-hmm. nothing that can't be achieved. Yeah, uh, you know. So, you know. So, yes, you know. It's a, you know. It's all part of the, it's part of the work, and it builds character. You know, when you can stand and no one else is standing, that builds your kid. That's your character. That shows you yeah. you're doing what you're supposed to do. You. That's exactly. why you, you came into the spirit and you came to be incarnated as Tyrone, as Pepekai, <clears throat> as as Jackie, as Imani, because you were meant to be doing the work that you're doing now. So, you know, that's how we have to, that's how we have to look at it. Yeah. Um, yes. So just for those who are, who are going to be seeing, let me share my screen regarding the GoFundMe. So that should be on the screen. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. Pepper Kai, Emza Pepper Kai said it very, very well, you know, that, you know, that the Temple of Mart and Shrine of Mummy Water, which is the Mar Mart Centre, 366A High Road, Tottenham, London, N17. There's the telephone, the number, you know, has been there for, you know, almost going on to now, was it now, Emza Pepper Kai, going on to what, 15 years, 20 years or something now almost, that you've been at the Mar Mart Centre? And, sure. you know, and is one of the repositories of the best collection of African centered books in Europe, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and there's a wealth of information there. And, you know, Emza Pepakai has already given more than 10 lifetimes of a people that has educated, the people who have come across him and been educated. My library comes from Emza Pepakai. You know, so you know, so you know, whether it was a head start and so on and so forth. And as uh, the elder MJ um, uh, Ashra Crazy calls it, a community university. You know, the Marmot Center is a community university. Mm. You know, and so was head, head, so head start. And from that, you know, the Pan African Congress movement has used as bases and worked very closely with our dear brother and elder, who's a member of the Pan African Congress movement. So you know, so you know, it's absolutely vital that this site stays and the, this book, this, uh, this repository of books, and the, the, the center is being refurbished, you know, so it become a community center, a hub for African people across Europe, across the world, and in, and, and in London, but also the book center. So, you know, there's, there's a, and Brother Tyrone, you know, seeing the need of it, created the GoFundMe. You know, and there's a GoFundMe go uh, link mm-hmm. there on the on, on the screen, and even has with the uh, with the with the Bookman Academy that if you if you uh, if you order through them and you use the the uh, the scan the code and order, you'll get you'll get a book, you know, or get a total you'll get something you know regarding you know for you know donated to the to the Go GoFundMe, and he promotes it with yeah. the book that he sends out there and, and uh, as and as we do. So, you know, it's, you know, this is in order so the refurbishments can happen so that this can con- continue because we cannot allow, you know, such a wealth of information not to exist, you, you know, not to exist. And many people know about it and we want more people to, you know, com- contribute to, to it. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a GoFundMe. You know, all you have to do is to put it to put in to, the, to find it on GoFundMe is save the Marmart Center and it'll pop up. Yeah. Or put the Marmart Center in there and it'll pop up. And then you can you can you can donate. So please do that do that do, uh, do donate, you know, so that we can have this refurbishment and you know the next um session that we will be having at the Pan African Congress movement will be Kwanzaa uh, because now we'll be focusing on 
uh, holding the our, our yearly Kwanzaa celebration, which is usually at, at the African Caribbean Cultural Centre in Hornsey, but this year will be at the Marmart Centre. So you know we want to make sure that it's up and running, so that can that can happen, and that the Marmart Centre can go from strength to strength. Have the community events, have the education, have the Saturday schools, have the have the the, the cultural events, have the the African spiritual um, uh, organisations operating from uh, operating from there, and it's a real hub for uh, for African people, and is that community university, you know, and be, and, and builds from that. So please, 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 please do look into it and and uh, contribute. Right. And again, you know, a massive thanks to Brother Tyrone and the Bookman Academy for taking on and, champion, and championing that. You know, you know, you know that's you know that's you know that's that, that's wonderful. That's joining the dots. Yeah. Pan Africanism in speaking right there. That's how, that's yeah. how, that's what we mean. Yeah. So uh, oh, 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 hold, hold on. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Sorry, uh, but sorry, I forgot to, that 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 mum speaks about it. the um. Yes. Okay. The 20, twenty pass rule. Yeah, yeah. You got to. You got to go and mute now. Okay. All right. Then. Thanks very much, Marvin. You've done a fantastic job. We much do appreciate you. Okay. So we're now going to come to the uh, come to the end. And so as, as we come to the end, what we do is we start. We end as we started with the the with the ritual. So you know we're calling on those powers that are within us, not outside of us, as you know in in uh, you know in Abrahamic faith that somebody yeah. outside of you know this is our power this is you know the creator is us the ancestors are us they haven't gone anywhere they're with us right now and that's what you know we call upon that so they come into our conscious reality and we can consciously pull upon them and come and and learn from them from their triumphs from their mistakes from their all of it and take it on into the, the, the future because they're waiting for us to do so they're waiting for us to do so and they're always speaking and talking to us with just that we sometimes we need to change our perception so we can do this and you know this is the ancestor speaking exactly. this is the ancestor speaking through the brother the brother this doesn't just come you know the brother how you you i would say you're in your mid-30s my brother me no i'm, I'm 29 29 uh, look at that yeah. look at that how <laughs> going too far you know that you know <laughs> tw 29 produce this yeah, less than 29 produce this you know that doesn't just come out of nowhere. That's the ancestors yeah. coming and speaking yeah. to the brother to produce some work. You see what I mean? <laughs> so this is this is our spirituality. You see, there's you know spirituality in reality sitting right in front of us. This is an ancestor come back. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. See how wonderful we are as a people. Yeah, exactly, 100%. So it's what wonderful to see. So let us continue with that in that spirit with our, with our ancestors and giving thanks for each other. And for everything we're doing, and may we work closely together, giving thanks and honor to each other and love as we part from each other, giving thanks and honor to our, our respective families, and may they be protected and support and supported. And we continue in this work and we can we continue in this work of love and fellowship with each other. Okay. So let me share my screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Yeah, we can. We all see your screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you see, you see the the, the words of manifestation on the screen. Yes, oh, it's still it's still um, on the Pan African Congress movement. Um, let me just make sure that that's sharing, and let's try that again. Okay. Has it changed? Oh yeah, that's better. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Santi Sana, thanks very much. Okay, so we're going to end, and as we're just a few of us here, we can all be on. You know, if we wish to be uh, unmuted, <coughs> we can all take participate together. And what we're going to do is just again with that, with that, with the energy that we just had about what we wanted to focus upon as we part from each other we're going to breathe together so that we are centered 
and one with our higher selves and therefore open our consciousness to universal consciousness to all and join with each other wherever we are in the world and have that energy pass from each other and go on as we go on through our lives and continuing until we meet each other again. So, MZ Pepakai, is there a number between, um, zero, between one and nine that we can use to, that you're resonating with that we can use to breathe together? Nine. Nine, okay, well, beautiful, which is the spiritual quantity for completion. Okay, so when Zoo is going, we're going to breathe together. So what we're going to do is we're going to breathe out, pull in that, and as we, as we breathe out, pull our stomachs in, that empties our lungs, and then we're going to relax and breathe in through, uh, relax our stomachs and let the air rush in through our nose. And that is one cycle, and that's one breath. Okay, so we breathe out. Relax, breathe in. Moja. Try and sit straight, back straight. Breathe out. Relax, breathe in. Mbili. Breathe out. Relax, breathe in. Tartu, our back is straight, so our seven energy centers or the chakra, as the Indus Kush called them, are in line. Breathe out. Relax, breathe in. In there. Breathe out. Relax, breathe in. Tana, feeling more centered and calm. Breathe out. Relax, breathe in. Sita, breathe out. Relax, breathe in. Saba, breathe out. Relax, breathe in. Nane, and final, breathe out. And relax, breathe in. Tisa. And that's how we should breathe. Not that consciously, calmly, and not being that breathing that happens when we're anxious. This is when we're coming in, we're centered and we're calm and we can call upon our powers. Now we're in that state, we're going to say the words of power and, and, and intention on screen. So I'm going to say the line and then everybody just follow after me to repeat what I, I say. So this is our intention. This is what we bring into, we're bringing it into reality by the very vibration of saying it, these words in Kiswahili and in ancient Kimitian. And so I begin. Mapenzi wote ni mapenzi yangu. Mapenzi wote ni mapenzi yangu. Hakuna mwanzo na hakuna mwisho. Hakuna mwanzo na hakuna Naomba ufahamu wangu ya wote. Naomba ufahamu wangu ya wote. Uendele kukua. Uendele kukua. Nguvu zote. Kwa watu wetu. Nguvu zote. Nguvu zote. Watu wetu. Watu wetu. Fani in Kemetian. Anuk, amen. Anuk, anuk, anuk amen. amen. The will of all is my will. There is no beginning and there is no end. May my understanding of the all continue to grow. All power to my, our people. I am, amen. I am that undefined, all-powerful energy that underpins all things. Asante Nisana, Jema. Asante Nisana. Thanks very much, family. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you for being joining us. Thank you, indeed, to Tyrone. We'll have thank, many more meetings family. and work, working together. Thanks for the work sure. and continue with the, with the work. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much.
Sister Jackie, it's good to see you. Thank you, Brother Bafakai. Good to see you also. Yes. And I mean, I heard, um, well, we're still being recorded, mm -hmm. but I heard um, Brother Amani mentioning the numbers here, but there is an explosion of events across Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, CLS is having one, Grenada Forward is having one, um, the SIS, um, GAC, there, there are a number, number, number of events. So I feel privileged to be able to zoom in this evening and to hear our young brother Tyrone. And I am um, agreeing very much with brother Imani. You know, our, um, our elders have a way of recognizing when we have ancestors in our midst and they say, we have all heads on young shoulders. Exactly. Our brother has brought that forward this evening and we give praises for, yeah, we give praises for you. Those that you will inspire, those who inspired you. Mm -hmm. and those oh, many, inspired. many. Yeah, thank you so much, sister. Thank Come you. Circle. This thank is you. That's the beauty of yeah, us exactly. as African people. Exactly. Yeah, that spiritual energy they can't they can't defeat it exactly they cannot be defeated. Yeah, so, 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 exactly, exactly we have to we have to remember that you know oppression is very intimate you know you want to be close to people you know you know and so they've always when even even when we say you know what add enough let's separate that's the last thing they ever want because of that spirit of that spirit because you know you know without us there is nothing you know, there is no universe, there is nothing. We are the source, we are the alpha, the, we are the omega. There is no beginning and there's no end. And they know that too. The only thing, the only thing that they've been trying so long for trying to do, which as you said, Tyrod, in your books, is a very short time in history. It's a blink, although they try and make out that it's been forever. It's a blink in time. Yeah, exactly. Is, 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 you know, is, is to make us forget who we are. Mm -hmm. and, in that, and as soon as remembrance comes back they know the game is up mm -hmm. exactly is up. Exactly. Is up. Mm -hmm. they understand how powerful we are otherwise even our bastardized misshapen culture that is not as 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 wonderful as we know we can produce is still the most powerful culture that goes across the world and everybody wants to be part of it in whatever in whatever thing we get involved with is music, art, culture, sports. Mm -hmm. what, you know, that shows you how powerful we are. And that's why they like to keep us very, very close. Exactly. You, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get people that you hate to suckle your children, to, <laughs> to, heal, to, heal, to, heal, to heal you. It's like that, you know, yeah. it's something very, very, they know they're dealing with their mothers and fathers. They know this. It's we who don't know, you know, but it's just locked in our DNA and it's only about to come through. And that's what this brother has done. He came through his DNA and he, put, and he produced it to affect many others, just like he's been affected. Wonderful. Can't give enough praise. Thank, All you, right. thank, you, thank you. You know, have a wonderful evening. Go, go well until we meet again. Kwaere to Tanana. Yes.